Anarchy. And welcome to the CENC Southeast Invitational Virtual, sponsored by the U.S. Army. My name is Bass from the Past, and joined alongside me here today is the lovely Hyphier. And Hyth, we have the pleasure of bringing it down to four final teams for this event. The quarterfinals are here, plus one round from the round before. But we are down to only ten teams left, which are going to get narrowed down to those four. This is going to be an exciting day. It is going to be a day full of some fantastic Rocket League action. How are you doing on this fine Tuesday? my friend well i'm doing absolutely lovely i was here last week as well and was able to see some of those round 16 matches and they were incredibly high skill the usually one player just pops off in them and we have another one of those round 16s ready here today coming up you know easing us into this tournament very nicely starting us off Indeed, they do. It is Southern Miss versus Wake Forest here in our first matchup of the day. It is going to be a back and forth that's going to go to five games at its most. And it's going to be an really interesting one here because, Hyferia, we've been talking about this all day here. A lot of these teams are playing for a spot at the LAN. That's what they're looking for here is the winner of this not only secures themselves $1,000, but they also get a spot at the LAN in the future here. And, Oh boy, that's going to be absolutely huge for a lot of these teams. And for some of these teams, it's already something that they have accomplished. In specific, for Wake Forest, they've already been invited. So for Southern Miss, this is a little bit more important. They want to survive here, give themselves a shot, and, well, they're going to have that shot now. Game number one underway here in this best of five. And like we said, a lot on the line for both of these teams. 
Yeah, in the light. Here we go. Kickoff has happened, Leighton. Already taken it to the backboard, following it up with a second tap. Actually misses it. His teammate misses it as well. But the one and only, he might just be able to bang that off the crossbar. Indeed, he was able to do that. Of course, looking to go a bit lower with that. Counter-attack, Sardom alone getting it through. Very fitting car with him as well. Very fitting car, but unfortunately, the car alone can't quite get the shots into the back of the net here. Despite some good offense from Wake Forest, they still haven't hit the back of the net yet. We remain at this... Oh, wait a minute. I was going to say 0-0 zero, zero scoreline, but we do instead. Four Eyes Optic not quite able to get around that one with zero boost in the tank. The shot was unfortunately not able to arrive. And we've gone back and forth here in Game 1. A couple opportunities on both sides, but like we said, Game 1, a little bit of jitters. It's going to take some time for these guys to develop. It's going to take some time to really get them out of their shell. Golden Snakes getting that pass below. That is the wrong team. And as of right now, Southern Mississippi, they come out of the gates swinging. Four eyes uptick. And defense needs to be careful, though. Can't leave the ball hanging like that. So he does decide to take it all out for a stroll at the park. Malone, forcing that one through. Good muscle on him. Edge of the box now. And one and only. 50's it. Far away. Thankless. Gets it a bit further, but four eye uptick. Very much in closer to the play below. Can he get this counter-attack started? It seems to be the case. Nobody there to follow it up, but also nobody home. Almost Malone breaking through. Lake Ford is doing a good job of transitioning out of their half very quickly, and it's made Southern Miss a little bit uncomfortable on defense here. You can see they're kind of bunching up in the net, not really sure who to approach the ball, and as a result, they're just allowing a lot of pressure out of Wake Forest right now, so they've got to be careful. This first goal is going to be rather crucial because with almost two minutes gone here and not a single goal on the board, you know it's going to be absolutely influential and not only momentum but confidence and we talk about this a lot high fear confidence can really carry a team in rocket league if you can believe that you can win you most likely can being able to challenge the ball and do so bravely is absolutely a key to victory and it's also playing at your opponent's level being able to mm. step up to the plate and have them guess good bump out of one and only to send thankless fly alone but the replies latent full centers his teammate right there to try and rip a shot off Rings of a defender Locks in with his car and one and only now a shot on target golden snakes and thank was combined for the save they pinch it away from defense was once again southern mist really up in the attack and putting the screws to the defensive side of the shot not quite finding its way on target with enough of vigor they're trying their best but unfortunately despite multiple attempts they are now going to have to endure another defense which I think they should be able to survive. Golden Snakes takes a little bit of a lackluster shot there, so it's not going to ring home. But Wake Forest are kind of looking for this. They're waiting to just endure this pressure out of Southern Miss, waiting until they get a chance to go across court. And when they do, they move very quickly into offense. It's a counterattacking play versus an overwhelming amount of pressure. And honestly, at this point, I'm not really sure who's going to be the victor here and which strategy will be more wise because it's been pretty even so far, despite the fact that we haven't necessarily seen a shot that has really got us rocked here and had us rather nervous that it might penetrate the defense. It is still one of these things where both teams have had their opportunities. So it's about whoever takes the most advantage of said opportunity. And maybe Southern Miss can do that right here. They're back on offense once again, one and only in the corner, though. Not quite able to hold on to that one. And now Wake Forest will take it the other way. You have to say that that was one of such opportunities. Two demos happening, taking two defenders off of the line. They weren't able to break through. Wake Forest quickly replied and had a defender stall the time late. Might find the second tap. Flies past it, one and only. Also flies past it for his uptake. Crucial that he gets a touch there. Does indeed, but one and only. Gets blocked by Malone. Lane dives in, pinches at center. Teammate following it up, four eyes uptick. Almost gets it through, but now Malone pop that. With a slow pace on it makes it awkward for one and only. And that's the back up lane, pass it down the side of one. Now, as we head into the final one minute, it is crunch time for both teams. It is getting very tense here. You know, this next goal not only is going to be influential, but could be the very last one we see and could be the decider for this first game. And that's a really important one. When you have a series this close, the first game is all the more important because it sets the tone. And one player knows that better than anyone else. One and only 400 points, three saves, and the first goal of this game. Lives up to his name, of course. The one and only. He is the one and only to score, or at least wouldn't only to score at this particular moment still time for Wake Forest to come back and they do need to 
try and show themselves, prove themselves on the pitch here. Golden Snakes clears it away, but clear out to the side. That's not going to bring them anything. They need to convert that into an attack. Leighton currently doing a phenomenal job at keeping that in the attack in third. Malone might just be able to rip a shot. They're trying to play on the demos more and more on the side of Wake Forest, noticing that they don't break through in another way now. This time, also, also, one and only does not break through, but the final 10 seconds, Wake Forest is in the attack. They're in the attack here, but again, they really got to try and throw something at their opponent. And so far throughout this game, despite multiple opportunities, no solid shots on. And they will not find one to, fi to finish it off. Southern Miss will take the first win here in this best of five. And this was an impressive win for a number of reasons. Not only were they able to withstand the pressure that Wayforce were throwing at them, but you started to see by the end of the game, they were creating a lot of space, feeling very comfortable on offense and going for passing plays additionally. So it feels like Southern Miss have kind of shook off the jitters from game number one. They're no longer as nervous as when they started off this series. And I think this bodes well for their future and their chances at the land in the future. Absolutely. Southern Miss were nicely able to seclude Wake Forest to a certain area on the map that was their own defensive third. They were back there a very long amount of time, struggling to try and get it away, and then also struggling to get that counterattack. They did get four shots. Most of them were ripped by Malone. All of them were actually ripped by Malone. But Wake Forest, they need to put more venom on their shots. They need to make them more lethal, because as of right now, they're struggling to break through. They're not getting too many opportunities, and once that is the case, you need to make the best out of every opportunity. That's the big thing here is just making sure to be advantageous. Take advantage of every single opportunity that is given to you because if you do not, unfortunately, you're going to probably be left in the dust. So let's figure out if we can change that one up here for Wake Forest. At this point, they've had a decent amount of shots, but they just need one to ring home, and then that can give them that spark of life necessary to keep on trucking. But that's easier said than done. Game number two underway here to Southern Miss versus Wake Forest with a Southern Miss lead in the series. But as we've been mentioning, plenty of time for these teams to develop and plenty of time for them to make this one competitive. Plenty of time indeed. Well, for Wake Forest, it is somewhat you have to go at this moment. There is time in this match, but one and only he's trying to reduce that time. And that's just an exquisite play. Whichever way you look at it, left, right, and center, every angle is this a good play. Just gets it around one, takes it around the other, and finally finishes it off off the backboard. The pinch in the angle there, by the way, absolutely absurd. You can understand why the last defender wasn't really able to, well, even get a touch on the ball there, because you never expect it popping out like that. But the unexpected, sometimes you have to be prepared for, and Southern Miss have been prepared so many times already. They'll do it once again. Dunk in front of the net, and the one and only, well, the one and only person to score throughout the series so far. Southern Miss looking hot coming into this second game. It took them a while to break the defense of Wake Forest. Very seemingly have broken it down, put a crack in the wall, and they're starting to hammer it home time and time again. Obviously, still the same holes that we said earlier. Time left for Wake Forest to come back. But they do need to get going. Their offensive prowess hasn't quite been enough to bring the game to Southern Miss to bring it back from a two goal deficit and maybe even worse because Southern Miss they're not done pressing the issue just yet. Now Southern Miss are keeping this pressure on continuing to put shots on target so much so that they are the only team with shots in this game almost a minute and a half gone and so far it's been Southern Miss with four total versus Wake Forest without a single one now they're gonna have to endure some even more defense here Wake Forest need to break out of their half and just give themselves some chances this team showed they were capable in game number one. A couple of decent opportunities, but the unfortunate truth is that this midfield presence that's developed out of Southern Miss is something they don't seem to be expecting. They were not prepared for it, and as a result, they've been locked into their half without boost, without organization for quite some time. Let's see if they can break out here, though. Good touch in the corner from Malone. is going to buy a lot of time and space for their team. Now I think finally Wake Forest have broken out of their half and have a chance at offense chance at offers but it's only a quick glance and then they get right back into that defensive position they're constantly being pressured by southern mist and malone actually clears it away golden snake wants that follow-up was there a boost it's going to be difficult late extends to the back wall. it's going to pop on right down oh my word four eyes off to gets it on target from a ridiculous angle malone is there in time to try and react and doesn't get the block on here thankless has to leave that to his teammate golden snakes golden snakes needs to get a block does indeed do so. Leighton, he's not going to let up the pressure at any time soon. 
Oh, just look at how much time we're seeing out of Southern Mist right now. They're doing a good job of developing such a strong midfield presence that Wake Forest don't really want to challenge them anymore. They're aware that if they make a mistake, immediately the ball is getting punched into their own half. So they've got to be careful right now. And I think, unfortunately, for Wake Forest, that little bit of carefulness is now turning into hesitation and probably some overpatience that's not really going to help them out. They can't be tentative against a team like Southern Miss because they're just going to continue to lock you in your half and keep looking for those golden opportunities if you do so. I've got faith. I've got plenty of time left in this game as well. So if Wake Forest want a shot, all they have to do is start getting out of their half and, well, not allow shots like that out of Southern Miss. That was a close one. Thankless he gets it through. Thunder Boost picks up. I'm not going through one and only. Malone back in defense. Looks for the quarter with zero boost. Well, let's try to force a 50. Golden Snakes in the midfield. And Thankless also being far back. Goes past the ball, has to recover, gets the boost, but Malone, he's left in a precarious situation that he has to deal with, gets it through, goes on the counter-attack, but it's usually only Malone going up to that counter-attack. Here are two players with Golden Snakes. There he is, right on time with 90 seconds remaining. He puts the difference to one. And there we go, finally being advantageous, something we have been so complimentary of Southern Miss for throughout this game. And now we see at a Wake Forest, you get one double commit in front of the net, and before you can blink, a player is there to slam that one home. Props to Golden Snakes. The question is, is whether or not they can find themselves another goal, though, because with only about 80 seconds left, they've got to be careful here. They go down in this game. It's all of a sudden a chance at a sweep for Southern Miss. And for a team that has already made the land here, it's not only going to be about taking a win here and trying to prove themselves, but it's also possibly a preview to what might to come here. Southern Miss are hunting that land spot. So if they have a successful enough run here in the CENC, then there's absolutely a chance that they could have a rematch against this team in the future. And you know if that happens, Wake Forest are not going to be happy about the results they put out here today. But that's getting ahead of myself. They still can turn this result around. With 50 seconds left, all they need is one good goal. They can force a tie here and force an overtime. That's the round of 16, and there's no second go. Once you lose, you are out. So the miss currently on their way to secure themselves a spot. On, on their way uh, being the key phrase in that one and only in the corner just trying to waste time to get a second game on the board for Southern Miss it's not even over just yet four eyes optic in the corner Malone he's been threatening on the, the attack with that mailing car chasing the ball down and bringing Wake Forest opportunities are plenty of Leighton extends to the back where Malone catches it Malone now on the counter attack the most important one that he's uh, ever gotten in this series and it's one and only to stop him dead in its tracks four seconds the game is not over just yet it oh. pops to the edge of the box but it will hit the ground it will stay on the ground as it touches zero seconds Plenty of time still left in this series, but Southern Miss have just put themselves in the best foot forward possible. 2-1 to one over Wake Forest, and now 2-0 to zero over the team overall. I like that the chat isn't over and out of this one yet, though. I see, come on, Wake. 0-2 isn't a disadvantage. It's a challenge. And that's the mentality you need right now if you are Wake Forest. You need to come into this one just full guns a-blazing. You cannot hesitate if you want to try and take down Southern Miss. I think that's when they did their best, I fear it, when they were really moving around this pitch with speed and a lot of ferocity they seem to get in the way of southern miss and make them uncomfortable two shots total though is just not enough in comparison to the seven that southern miss threw out here so if wake forest want a chance at this one they gotta get aggressive they gotta get in the face of southern miss and they just gotta start getting themselves opportunities i've heard that 2-0 lead is the most dangerous lead that's out there you've got everything to to lose all the pressure is on you you have to close this one out choking is a real fear and choking hazard they always put it on the boxes now <laughs> You can't have that here. Southern Miss, they are up 2-0. Wake Forest, they're going to be fighting to come back because this is their only chance. They've got a chance, though, and that's the main thing is there's still absolutely a possibility, but they just need to start themselves off on the right foot here. A good goal early on would be massive for the team and their confidence. Oh, and they're hunting for it right now. Wake Forest on offense, but only momentarily. Immediately sent out to midfield. Thankless will get the ball, but... That's not a necessarily a good sign here. Southern missed the team that we have talked about. Their midfield presence is what gave them so many advantages by locking in their opponents into their half and just keeping them there until they eventually broke down. Meanwhile, we see Wake Forest. They spent about 10 seconds on their opponent's half and don't even find a really solid shot from it. So I got to see Wake Forest get a little bit more in the face. We were talking about liking that aggression. Ooh. We need to see more than just one shot from that aggression. And they try that right there. Golden Snakes goes in for the follow-up. Not quite able to find the back of the net. What a booming flick. And then right now.
four eyes up tick. Clears it away. One and only. Down to the other end. Layton gets it. Into the edge of the box. And he has to do, try and do it himself. Four eyes up tick. Gets it into the sky. Out to the midfield. Trickles on in there. One and only. He's up for the play. And well, they're really trying to prove themselves even more. As four eyes up tick. Booms the first one into the back of the net. Once again, though, look who's setting this entire thing up. One and only puts it into the backboard, immediately goes up with that same aggression as before, blocks out the defense and sets up their teammate perfectly. One and only and one and four eyes optic. This duo so far has been rather threatening. And again, this is what's making it so difficult for Wake Forest right now is that it's this overwhelming pressure that Southern Miss start to develop and then never really let go of. They lock you into your half, keep on putting pressure, keep on putting shots. And eventually, even with if it's a little mistake, it's enough that they see an opportunity. They see a hole in the defense and they poke and prod at it until they find a goal. Southern Miss just showing what that overwhelming pressure can really do for an offense. And unfortunately, Wake Forest having quite figured out it itself so now they're gonna have to try and run this the other way look for the an equalizing goal with three minutes remaining but again long series long game plenty of time for southern or excuse me for wake forest to get back into this one all they need is that one spark of life realistically they're only looking for the money they've already been invited to the land malone he still wants that money though he still wants to get that top two position locked down Going to be denied one and only to the backboard. No second tap coming through as it gets trickled into the edge of the box. Once again, four eyes up. So he decides to go low with it. Now it's thankless on the side. It's a ripper, but will it be on target? It will be on target as well. But there you have another obstacle of a latent being in your way. Four eyes up. So it gets cleared by his uh, self. But Mellon for the passing field. And as I hear, it was indeed a very close I like that though. The creativity from the team uh -huh. is rather interesting. Passing plays are rather beneficial, but I can tell you one thing that isn't. Own goals are not going to help out the team whatsoever. Unfortunate for Wake Forest <laughs> as they go down 2-0. to zero. That is an unfortunate one for sure. And Southern Miss looking well on their way to close this one out in three. Don't They don't want to have this take longer than in their eyes necessary. Honestly, it is going to be a tough task for Wake Forest to try and come back in this game. Thankless might just be able to start it here. Let's see if they can. They are back on offense, but they need to try and continue it for some extended time. And again, it's the midfield presence difference between the two teams here. Southern Miss know how to move into their opponent's half so effectively and then play patiently to just lock them in and slow starve of the boost. Meanwhile, Wake Forest trying to break out from midfield, but every time they do, it is very short-lived stints that don't oh. really lead to much. Hold up, how did this lead to anything? We got blocked by the demo here, so I actually didn't see the goal, but I'm very happy to watch this one back. Layton with a dunk over Thankless, and oh boy, Southern Miss putting on a show here. Layton just seeing red, not thinking about his choices anymore, and just dives on in there, makes it work. And the thankless gets it on the target but once again. There is a defender in the way. Southern Miss, their defensive rotation is being kept intact while also putting a lot of pressure on the way for his defensive side. The, the combination of things makes it really threatening and really tough for Wake for us to break through. And they've only got one minute and 20 seconds left to try and do so. And three times as well. It's going to be tough. This is not going to be easy by any stretch of the imagination, but this team has shown before they do have resiliency and they do have chances. They need to not give as many chances to their opponents, granted, but they still absolutely have a shot here. One minute remaining, as long as they can find that first goal to just start up this comeback, they have got themselves an opportunity, but let's see if they can make one here in the corner. Not so much. One and only takes it the other way, tries to pinch it with Leighton. Really all they're doing right now, though, is wasting time and that's a valuable thing. With only 40 seconds left, High Fury, the chances are starting to look rather bleak. The chances are indeed is starting to look rather bleak, if not completely over already. The game of Rocket League is never 100% over until it hits zero, but I think with this goal finding the back of the net, it might just be. Yeah, I think, unfortunately, I think that is going to be the end of this one. Four goals in 30 seconds. It's possible, but it basically means a perfect kickoff. So let's take a second and find out if it is actually a possibility. If Wake Forest can run this one in immediately off a of kickoff, they've got a shot in. 
Oh boy, there is a chance here. Leighton does actually pop this one out, and no one and only is there to follow it up. And at this point, they've wasted enough time. 20 seconds left on the clock. That is not enough time for a four-goal comeback. Let's make it five. Fifth goal goes in for Southern Miss, and they wrap up this series with five goals in game three and three goals or three games overall. And they move into the top eight with this win. They will be reaching the quarterfinals. Semi-finals and brackets are weird. They reach the top eight. It does not matter. They very much get a solid win under their belt as well. I think that's the most important part. Whichever round they're moving on to, they have done it with a solid W. Yeah, they have done a very good job here at setting themselves up for the rest of the day. And like we say, this really is the rest of the day here. Most of the teams that we're going to be watching are only going to be playing once. Southern Miss, though, now has got another matchup waiting for them later in the night versus, I believe, USF, University of Southern Florida here. So this is an interesting one for Southern Miss. It not only gives themselves a lot of momentum and a lot of confidence here, but it's confidence and momentum that is quite literally going to translate into another match we have in a couple hours now. So. This is going to be an interesting one. I've got faith in Southern Miss to really run with this momentum and this confidence and take it throughout their day, but we're going to have to see. A couple hours from now, they might have slowed down a little bit, might have gotten a little bit cold, so let's hope that they can stay warm and really give us a show. Yeah, let's hope so, because the opponents that will be coming up, they're going to be incredibly tough as well, and I don't think they're going to be sweeping it up that easily anymore. It's going to be tough, of course, as the day goes on. The opponents will get tougher. They've got one match to try and make it into that finals day where it will really come down to who can hold the nerves the best. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting one. This is definitely going to be one of these things where it's about who shows up on the day. And a best of, uh, or not best of one, in a single elimination tournament, it really is about how you perform on that day. There are no second chances. You do not get another opportunity to try and come back here and battle in a lower bracket. It's about making sure that you do the most of your opportunities when you are given them. And well, so far, Southern Miss has done exactly that. Congratulations to Southern Miss on moving into our top eight now it comes down to the hard part here, Hyferia. We are down to only eight teams left. Four of them will move into our semifinals and give themselves a shot at starting to find that prize money in first and second place. The rest of them have to send themselves home packing and no shot at that land whatsoever. It's an interesting scenario. It's a lot of really intense situations, but it's something we're going to have to find out about in just a little while. We're going to take a quick little break, get everything set up for our top eight, but when we return, it is down to only those eight te only eight teams. The quarterfinals right around the corner. You are not going to want to miss it. Stay tuned.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to CENC Southeast Invitational Virtual, brought to you by and sponsored by the U.S. Army. My name is Bass from the Past, and joined alongside me once again is the lovely Hyferian. Hyfe, we are now finally out of the round of 16. It is down to only eight teams left. Four of them will move into the quarterfinals, and two of them will get cr prize money at the end. But the real thing everybody's playing for is that singular spot at the LAN that is going to be coming up. we got a lot on the line here, and for these two teams, it's all the more important it is clemson versus the college of charleston and here's the thing hyferia neither one of these teams has yet secured themselves a spot at that land so this one all the more important and clemson their second team playing here today and i actually did see them play last week they were looking incredibly solid so i'm surely going to be looking out for them and see you'll see they have a matchup in front of them obviously a bit unfamiliar on their end that LAN is what they all play for. They they always say you can't buy experiences, and I, I genuinely think this is one of those where, sure, you could be winning five hundred or a thousand dollars. Having a LAN is something that's going to stay with you for the rest of your life. I mean, lands are what got me here in the first place. I don't know about you, Hyferia, but when I was a young kid looking at lands, watching, going to a CSGO land in my town and seeing these guys play professionally, it's what got me into esports, and it's the reason that I'm here today, and I might be able to get these guys into esports for the rest of their lives. So, life-changing experiences on the line potentially here, and for these two teams, they want it all the more. A best of five between Clemson and the Char College of Charleston here, and... I really don't know who to take bets on here. Like you said, Clemson not here with their necessarily first team, but their second team still capable enough to make top eight, which means we better be prepared. We might have a barn burner on our hands. Absolutely. Make sure for Snipe. Snipe was the last week an MVP for Clemson. Their first team actually already knocked out in the first round. A bit unfortunate with a pass going in field, but Brody straight into towards Wrath makes it work jumps into the inside iridium the block in this first game is looking like clemson too might just be able to open it up there go snug with the pass in field the rat to finish it off very quick on this one they don't even blink in already shots on target snipes beautiful drop down here you can understand why charisma dives on that one i don't think anybody's expecting the drop down and when you see that your teammate's not going to get in the way you kind of have to and well no such luck see you see at this point unfortunately down by one charleston gonna have to try and bring this one back but maybe they can do that right here charisma shot on target but no such luck finding the back of the net no such luck right now iridium it's going to go for a second attempt. Rap has to take that on a stroll. Iridium just blocks that at the gate. Oh my word, that's dangerous. Brody and Slive double kill. Brody now has to force another save. Charisma was a decent shot, but it was right above a Brody. All you have to do is double jump. Jumps broke through, but it once again is a Brody in the way of it. Charisma to the center. Snipes on the clear away. Pops it out to the side. Iridium staying close. Brody can't quite break it through, and they need to be careful on defense because of the C of C side. They are planning things, and no, no, that is not what they were planning. Yeah, I don't think so. Unfortunately, open net, open opportunity, and a team like Clemson are not going to allow that to happen. Iridium just dives underneath that ball a little bit too quickly. But we mentioned this in the last series, so it's only fair we mention it here. This is just game number one. These teams are going to take some time to warm up, time to get into this one. I have a feeling that for Charleston at this point, they're going to have to try and pull this one back. See if they can get something together here, though. They do have 
Bit of a weird stand on the back end here. All three of them clumped up in the center, and Jubs doesn't want to go for this one. Awkward plays all around, but somehow, some way, Charleston will survive for now. Will survive for now, but they did suffer some bleeding already. Brody tries to get down the inside. And now very much trickles into the edge of the box. Snipes missing the play. Wrath out to the side once again. Charisma has to suffer a bump from his own teammate. That will certainly feel like he is betrayed as he gets out to the side. Jubs. Wanting to stay close to the play, but Snipes, that's a boomer across the pitch. Raft extending to the back where Snipes is there for the follow-up. Snipes it on a target or slices it too much, so it ends up on the left side. Brody, that's an absolute clanger, but it won't be on target, so it does not matter. And CFC, they're still holding up, but by what amount? Oh my word, Clemson have not stopped taking shots on target since they got into this offense. Five total shots within the first half of the game and two goals to show for it. These guys were shooting 50% up until that last shot that missed. We're trying to get back to that 50, but no such luck. Iridium gets in the way and cuts that one off. But at this point, it's not really going to make much of a difference how what percentage they're shooting at. Just the amount of shots alone is already overwhelming. There comes in what should have been a registered seventh, but enough off target it does not. Nonetheless, the disparage is still rather apparent here. A single shot this whole game for Charleston versus the six for Clemson. They just need to give themselves some more opportunities, I fear. It's looking very similar to the last game we had where Wake Forest, they had great offenses when they found them, but they were so far and few between that they eventually just let their opponents run away with it. I fear the same is happening for Charleston right now. Clemson very much in the lead here and are taking so many shots and keeping so much pressure that Charleston just doesn't really have a chance to get back into this one. I'm very curious to see what the main team of Clemson looks like because I'm looking at this second team and oh my word, taking a deeper look even as Wrath there he doesn't quite get it into the back of the net. And they're looking so solid. I really wonder how their first team is looking and they got knocked out already by UVF, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> That's a scary opponent to come up against. That's a very difficult opponent to try and battle against here. So let's see if maybe this battle can continue and kill. I don't know. Maybe get a little bit closer right now because as much as it is only a 2-0 score line, as we've mentioned multiple times here, College of Charleston just has not had that many opportunities to get back into this one. The shot disparage even further now at 7-1. to one. Oh, actually, no, they did get in the second shot, so they are getting some offense together. And they have actually spent a decent amount of time on their opponent's half, so maybe they can slot something in here and give themselves that necessary momentum shift not quite yet though and wrath gonna put a shot off target here so here comes another offense for Clemson but at this point Charleston can't afford this with only a minute left they need to get some offense together and they need it fast they need it to get it fast 55 seconds and obviously the time taken down by the second that's all the time that puts to try and get back into this match wrath to the center if you make it three like snipe does right here slice it on in and that might just be the game my oh my, Clemson just do not stop with this offense. Now registering a total of eight shots throughout almost about four minutes of play. And three for eight is a pretty good shooting percentage as well. These guys shooting almost 50% from the field. And considering the amount of offensive pressure to see them be this effective once they actually get a shot as well, doesn't necessarily bode well for Charleston, who have really struggled to find that same sort of efficiency. I still have faith in a best of five series where we're only in game number one, and I will say it's looked a lot closer during the second half of this game. It feels like there's just that little switch that needs to be flicked. As soon as we see Charleston get that ignition, that spark of life, they'll be right back into this one. Unfortunately, it's not going to arrive off of this offense. Shot a little bit lackluster, and Brody will easily send that one out. Easily sent out to the side, as you say. It's a best of five. You have a bit of wiggle room. Well, this first game, certainly a warm-up for C or the C. They need to try and get themselves into the attack a bit more efficiently as Wrath almost snipes the fourth goal for Clemson 2 on CFC. They, they did manage to get things going at the end there. I think that's the important part, that they were able to create some shots, create some offensive pressure. They just need to build upon that. Yeah, that's the big thing, is, is that getting pressure is one thing. Getting a shot on target that is threatening and really rocks the defense is a whole other ball game. I mentioned this a lot at pretty much every single level of Rocket League, but most specifically, I would say somewhere between pro and bubble play in that range, is you see a lot of this. These teams who really figure out how to have a clean rotation. They are doing a fantastic job at locking a team into their half, continuing with this pressure, and rotating as a trio effectively. When it comes time for them to actually rip off a shot, they play a little bit hesitantly because they don't want to take a risk. And... Unfortunately for Charleston at this point, it's kind of time to take a risk, guys. 
Clemson are too overpowering. If Clemson can read you guys when you play your standard play, it's time to deviate. It's time to deviate a little bit and go for something a little bit less. Uh, I don't know. Typical? I'm not sure what the right word is here, but creativity is going to be key. If Charleston wants a shot at taking down Clemson, they've got to get more creative on offense. If you go with a standard place, that will also be in the books. They will have prepared for that. They have a way to shut that down already as we go into that game number two. Let's see how creative they can get. Ridium has a standard clear out to the side, but in defense, it's all fine. It's the offense where a CFC needs to get creative. Brody with an infield pass, puts it behind Snipe, forced to rotate back. Snipe with a quick turn in, and Wrath 50 keeps it up the goal line. Jobs putting that into the box once again. Charisma misreads the amount of boost he has in the tank, and this could be dangerous on defense. Could be dangerous, but so far they're holding pretty strong, and like you said, the defense hasn't necessarily been the point of questions here for CFC. It's been more their offense and their transitions out of defense. Oh boy, but unfortunately, maybe we should have been a little bit more critical of their defense. Caster Curse will show itself at some point, and well, how about on the one time that we start to compliment the CFC defense? Unfortunate miss out of Charisma, but Clemson far too quick, and they will punish. Charisma caught in an awkward scenario where he knew he had to jump off the side, well, really did not want to. Has to, had to go backwards, had to do some awkward flipping thing is this time. It has to be clear out to the side, indeed, Charisma clears it away only into the corner where they are able to continue the pressure for the start of Clemson. Nicely forced through by Brody and then <laughs> Snipes. I told you to look out for this lad. And uh, he explains why. Oh my word. Yeah, you really did warn us. And even that warning wasn't enough to prepare us for what was that. Bar down and in. Slams that one home. Says 34 miles an hour. I'm going to guarantee you had that one not bounced off the ground, it would have been a whole lot faster than that. But speed, it doesn't really matter here. The score line is what really does. And Clemson up 2-0 to zero within the first minute of play. Again, Charleston not looking bad right now. Their defense has held pretty strong for most of this match. But the unfortunate truth is, is that they're just giving too many chances to Clemson. To Clemson. Three shots in the first minute is so much pressure that you just cannot afford. Especially against a team which has had your numbers so far. They get into offense. They play pretty well. And Clemson demonstrate that once again. Lens and this this is a best of five can go either one of two ways after that first game where it's a, a tough battle for one team they can either start coming back and really regain that momentum like they did at the end of the game or it can be like this where Clemson kind of the, just takes the reins and completely controls the opposing side CFC they're not out of this but they are on their way to being beat by Clemson who are looking exquisite on the pitch once again with uh, so much pace and so much just disrespect to your wrath flying through saying you're gonna miss this ball CFC unfortunately they do once again here and uh well this is starting to look a little bit bleak. Four goals in just about 90 seconds of play makes it seem like Clemson have not only figured out how Charleston wants to play, but they've written some notes and are starting to study them. They understand how the offense and defense both work and are exploiting them to a team, recognizing those gaps, poking and prodding until they find a way through. And when they do, they strike rather fast. This is a difficult game for Charleston to come back from, but I've got faith that the team can do it nonetheless. Again, the defense held pretty strong for them. A good deflection there not going to be enough to completely keep it out of the box but again if they can just work on these saves turning into better clears that turn into an offense they've got a chance unfortunately it's been a lot of on the line saves and well the first one was good no follow-up though and Clemson put in a fifth I've got tactic here for CFC and it will be an outlandish one hmm. currently you're two minutes in you're down by six goals you can almost write this game off already so I'm, I'm gonna go to the animal kingdom what do they do when they are in a battle that they know they can't win they play dead i recommend here for cfc allow clemson 2 to just keep on scoring goals somewhat play quote unquote dead and then all of a sudden strike back in the next game when they don't expect you to come at them anymore Huh. Maul them into a false sense of security, eh? Is that, uh, mm -hmm. is that the strategy? I mean, listen, it's a viable one. I'll give you that. A good example of that was, uh, I think it was a 4-0 to zero sweep we witnessed from the Renegades versus Ground Zero this weekend in RLCS OCE. 
going into game number four of the first uh, sweep that we saw, because it was a best of seven sets, so they had to play three games. We'll ignore the seventh goal now coming in from Snipes before <laughs> mid at mid time here because oh my word is this a beautiful goal but this will actually kind of help me emphasize my point when you have a team popping off this much like you said maybe just kind of let them run with this and go for the rebound ground zero did that game number four of that first best of seven they allowed renegades to score 10 goals 10 they just gave up at a certain point. They went, all right, we're not winning this first series. It's not for us to take. So let's just kind of glow them into a full sense of security. We haven't scrimmed them in months. They're not very familiar with how we play. So if we just make them feel like, you know, we play lackadaisically and they can score on us, by the time we get into the next series and make it competitive, it'll throw them off. And guess what? It worked. Ground Zero won that next series in a best of seven that went to seven games. They didn't win the entire night, but it goes to show you, if you really can downplay how your team is actively working around this pitch, it can kind of get the other team off off filter because if they expect you to play one way and then all of a sudden you come out the gates and play completely differently, it can throw them off. So at 7-0, you might be right. It may be time to kind of throw in the towel and just look towards the next game. And especially considering the fact that Clemson don't really seem to be slowing down either. They're still throwing everything at Charleston. And Charleston at this point just kind of needs to pack it up and get ready for the next one. Clemson, they're a relentless. They just will continue firing shots on your target. It doesn't matter how much you lay down, they will continue to do so. And CFC, and they might just be uh, ready for that next game. Meridian with a clear away now. Raph trying to keep this one in, and pretty much anything that CFC do would be to either create a meme in the Brazil, or to gain some sort of momentum getting into their next game. Yeah, they've got to try and just give themselves that little bit of momentum or maybe just that end of momentum or... Ooh, can they get to Brazil? Can they get it? Yes, they can! Yeah, Jones will put this one in. And hey, at least they keep the shutout from happening. Hey, Hyferia. And it's a Brazil. It's funny memes. Haha, <laughs> you're just doing it for the memes, right? At that point, CFC, they've got a minute left and this might just be the ending scoreline. Goal differential doesn't matter, otherwise I'd very much still recommend Clemson to just keep on banging them in there. They just might do so anyway. Snipes makes it 8-1. to one. This is unreal. I want to point out something that's probably the most impressive stat of this entire thing. Yes, Clemson do have 8 goals in just about 4 minutes of play, meaning 2 goals <laughs> per game, or 2 goals per minute. But the more impressive stat is Brody. Brody currently has 8 assists. Every single goal for Clemson in this game has come off a pass from Brody at this point. That is uh, th that is unreal. The man is a single assist away from a triple playmaker. I don't know if I've ever seen that happen in any level at any rank of Rocket. I thought we were going to go to a different one, to be fair. I thought you were going to go to the five shots out of Snipes and the six goals he's managed to get oh, out of that. Oh, my word! <laughs> yeah, and no, I, I saw that one, and then I saw the assist. Like, oh wait, actually, you could go for this. Two interesting statistics for the side of Clemson. They might just be able to get this ninth. Let's hope it's set up for Brody. No, it's oh. sliced and moves it into the back of the net. And I guess he just has immaculate, immaculate conversion rate on the start of Snipes. Oh, well, I mean, yes. yes, he does. But at the same time, now at this point, did Clemson even really win if they didn't give Brody his triple uh, playmaker? I don't know okay. about this one. I think at this point with 18 seconds left, it's time to throw in the towel and just forfeit the win to Charleston. Jokes aside here, at this point, Clemson have had this game wrapped up for probably about two to three minutes here. They're just going for one more assist, one more goal, and I think they'll find it. No such luck. Good save on the line out of Jub, showing that there is still signs of life in the sea of team but now it's time for them oh, to hello. really show that we're going into game number three here in a best of five where Clemson has the chance to sweep their opponents I still think that Charleston can get this one done high fear they're very much still in this game but again it's about getting that offensive pressure here two shots throughout a five minute period is not going to be enough to beat Clemson it's also just not even enough even if they shot 100 percent to create a quarter of their score so Limit Clemson's shots, get some shots of your own, and Charleston can be right back into this thing. We've got the game plan figured out for them, but obviously from our side, it's, it's very simple to talk about the, what they need to do. Now they actually need to go on the pitch and prove it. It will be tough. Clemson, they're a formidable opponent. They're not going to be taken down easily, especially in a reverse sweep. But hey, CFC, you're not invited to the land, so you better get us to make it work right here, right now. Clemson, they're going to be fighting their hardest to try and prevent it, though.
Yeah, 100%. They do not want to go down in a 3-0 to zero sweep here. Not only for the fact that it's not necessarily the greatest performance from the team, but they still want that shot at a land. Again, the winner of this one does not guarantee them their shot, that shot at a land, but it moves in the top four and it moves you a single series away from at minimum guaranteeing yourself some money. So let's hope that they can try and give us a good run for our money at this point because we'd love to see a back and forth here in this best of five, but it really is up to Charleston if they want to deliver and show that that is possible. Clemson have shown that they can wrap this one up up here right here right now first they actually just need to break out of their half good offense so far here from charleston can they find anything from it again some punches on the both ends brody manages to Woo! dodge the demo but then also dodges the goal and cfc they play dead but right here they're very much alive fantastic play all around there out of csc especially considering this final flick iridium just takes the time baits in the defender and pops it high and the first lead for charleston now throughout this entire series and this is a big one if clemson cannot come back quickly enough we might just see all of that momentum they fought for in the last game start to dissipate and that would be massive for a game like rocket league where momentum is really such a huge factor taking away momentum from a team that has been overwhelmingly in favor would be huge Ooh, but first, they need to not let them get some offense. That shot, not going to find the back of the net there. But you do not want to let Clemson start getting some offense together here, High Fury. That is a dangerous position to be in. Whichever way this is going to go, C of C, they look so much more on the play than in the previous two games. They look very solo going into the attack. The solo plays coming out of the flicks, looking up to par to what they need to be as a pass in field and back towards a wrap. Set up by Snipes, Raph, did he get the flip? I don't think he did, otherwise he would have used it at a certain moment. But CFC, they're just getting started a bit too late here. Clemson, they are still in such a leading position. Even if CFC win this one, it will be tough. But CFC, if they have to be up to the task, this is as good as any moment to start it off. This is absolutely the chance here. They've spent almost about two minutes almost entirely in their opponent's half offense just overwhelming here and honestly to the point where they have more shots than their last couple games combined five total shots versus the three they took in game one and the two they took in the last one so actually equal the amount of shots excuse me for what i'm saying caster math has failed me but one thing it has not is it has not changed what the initial score was here cfc still up by one two minutes into this one and clemson trying to break that right here right now shot on target from brody but a great save from charisma will not allow the goal for now Snipes not quite getting the power on that that he was looking for it right into the um, box or the uh, corner of Clemson Prisma to the back where Snipes a bit awkward gets it clear out to the start but it's only a slight touch Jobs wants to go in for it Charisma goes for the boost seal Jobs thus is able to continue this offense and maybe constrict Clemson in that defensive third wrap and on the clear away getting now giving him breathing room Jobs out to the side, Snipes out of position, and Brody, he's not quite there as well, but just backflip and gives him an avenue to get back into the CFC though. They're still leading. They're still leading, but they are now enduring a whole lot of offensive pressure here. All Clemson need is a single goal to get them right back into this one. What a turnaround from the last game we saw, though. 9-1 to one in favor of Clemson. At this point, they haven't scored a single goal. The team has definitely been muted, but for how long? Here comes a chance. No such luck. Brody puts one on, but the defense is very much up to the task. Are they, are they enough to break out of their half? Not quite yet. Charleston enduring even more offensive pressure, and this is where Clemson is the most lethal, Hyferia. Once they get this midfield presence together, it can be rather difficult to break out. They've got 90 seconds to try and get some midfield presence. Some snipes passing that out to the side. Good path in, pass in field by Wrath. Brody extends 50 into the edge of the box. Trickles all in, but Jubs is able to clear it away. Snipes now has to get that from his own corner back into the offensive half. Brody, he's in the right position, but going up a tad bit too late. Has to back down Wrath. Like that almost on target. I think that very well could have been on target. Already it makes it up for Jobs and now Snipes will soar on in there and maybe get it into the box. Another 50 sends it right to the net of Clemson. Brody's prepared. Clemson starting to really feel the pressure of these cross court touches that we're seeing out of Charleston here. They are booming it out of their half. And while it's not necessarily leading to offense for Charleston, that time it does, but it's rather shut down quickly. It's 
is wasting a lot of time right now, and that's the big thing, is that Clemson don't want to have to restart their offense here. They'd much rather just hold it out at midfield and keep that pressure up. Every time they have to go back into their half and restart again, it's more time wasted and less opportunity for them to slot one into the back of the net. A huge opportunity right there, but no such luck. Clemson playing a little bit passive here because they know that those booming clears could happen at any moment. But they can't afford to do that right now. 15 seconds left. They need to get on the aggressive, and they need to keep it in their opponent's face. How about right here? Snipe off the backboard. Follow-up from Rath is cut off, but there is still a chance in the corner. Charisma can't quite pop this one far enough away from the defense, and there will be a chance here, or at least so I thought. Brody, awkward position, has to just try and keep this one up and will do not or will not do so. Charleston will take their first win in this best of five. And now they've given themselves a chance, I fear. They've got a reverse sweep against Clemson. It is a slim chance at that, but it is a viable one now. They at least laid down the first brick. They laid down some rule of law towards Clemson. The outlaws who are running their own little brigade. They've just been locked up in their own defensive half a bit too much. Five saves coming out of the snipes. But the defensive performance out of the CFC too strong for the opponents to deal with and actually break through nearing the latter part of that game. The CFC, they need to do this again. They need to rinse and repeat. And then even... If they do this once, they need to do it yet another time. It's going to be rather difficult. The good thing is we are starting to see Clemson really get muted when it comes to their offense. The last game, they had eight total shots. And while that is still a decent amount of shots, before this, they were converting pretty much almost 50% of them. This time, they don't get even nearly that amount of shots. They get or not that amount of conversion. They get eight shots, not a single goal to show for it. Meanwhile, their opponents go one for six overall. So we're starting to see Clemson and Charleston really starting to even this one out. They're feeling like both teams are absolutely on form here. The unfortunate thing for Charleston is it took them two games to get there. So they break form for even a single game. That's enough for Clemson to finish this one out. But so far, they are keeping up with it. Game number three, or excuse me, four underway. We are starting with a Charleston offense. As of right now, it is mainly Clemson breaking form, breaking rotations, and making it awkward in that defensive half. Charisma. Popping it to that defensive half of Snipes. You can't be taking loose touches like that. And this is exactly a display of why. They really can't hold down this midfield anymore. That is a bit unfortunate. Clemson trying to play patiently on their own half, but we're noticing that Charleston are no longer playing patiently. They're going full guns ablaze and throwing everything at their opponents, which makes, which makes it difficult for Clemson, a team that was rather methodical in a lot of the goals that they scored, to no longer have that time to set up anything intricate can be frustrating, and you can really see it. They're now going for booming clears out of their own half because they don't even want to try to set up anything intricate. They just want shots on target like that, and like that, but neither one of them finds the back of the net. First one off the backboard, second one off the post. What about the third? It never arrives. Snipes tries to sneak one in, and so does Wrath, but both of them with some inopportune touches. They will keep the offense together here, but one thing is for certain right now, Clemson is going to have to fight if they want a goal, and fight they will. They find their first one. They got scrappy. They were in the dirt. They were must wrestling the entire time but it is Clemson who comes out on the top here or at least are able to pull it tied in this game CFC they had a buffer of one that buffer now has been completely mitigated no a buffer anymore as Iridium surely wants to build that back up gets it get a bit of a safety net going once again and against Clemson you will very much need it there now once again looking solid they need to stay that way if they want to close this one out against a stronger looking CFC. Rhythm to the back for Brody. It's going to be having a tough time on that read. Jobs can't quite place it on target though. Not quite, but I like this. We're starting to see a real midfield presence out of Charleston. Something we hadn't seen from either team in quite some time. You need to be careful though. They don't want to give an easy counter attack to Clemson because again, once Clemson start going, they're kind of a hard team to stop. Once they get the momentum in their favor, they really run with it. And so far, they haven't had the ability to do so in about two games. So it's good. At least we're starting to see Charleston really slow them down. But we don't want to let them turn on the Jets yet again. Oh, my word. I thought we were about to see the Jets turn on right there. But no such luck. Charleston able to hold that one out for now. But Clemson really back on the prowl, really back to this overwhelming midfield presence. And here's why it's so deadly. Once you break down the defense and get them flustered, it can, it can be hard to recover. And, well, no recovery here. Charleston down a goal. 
No recovery from Charleston, but the recovery from Brody. Rapid. Pops it out to the side. Gets down to the side himself. And shoots it on target with formidable power. Brody. This time, the goal scorer. Gets into Iridium now. Snipes underneath. Pops it past to free play out of him. Charisma missing the play and now. It's, it's CFC. They just start to fall apart a bit. Missed touches. Open up avenues for Clemson. They don't capsulize this time, but they give them another opportunity like that, and they just might another opportunity won't arise since Iridium clears it away. I like this, though. We're seeing a really big turnaround out of Clemson. As much as we've been looking for a turnaround out of Charleston, it's nice to see Clemson return to form and really give a run for their money against their opponents because if Charleston wants to get through here and make it to that top four, they're going to have to take down Clemson. I'd like them to be able to do so when Clemson is in form. They still very much look up to the task, but with only about 100 seconds left, it is do or die for this team in a single elimination bracket like this. They need to survive. They need to just get themselves this win to even force a game number five. And they are getting eerily close to not even getting there in the first place. 90 seconds left and Clemson still on the prowl. Clemson put in the third. That might be the end of this one. And oh boy, would it be ever something spectacular. Snipes puts in a third off a bump in the goal. And that could be the dagger in the series. We already established earlier tonight that a two lead, whether that's a goal or series, might just be the most dangerous one. Now, Clemson, they've got a two goal lead with one minute and 20 seconds remain. This will pop on target. Charisma missing the play completely. Wrath being denied by Jobs, but Brody's still there to keep it into the box. Meridian, the big boomer away, follows it up himself. Rap, staying close, making it awkward, cuts it in field. Joe Jobs, that could have been a great play, but instead, it's down the other end. Rap converts, and surely they bury CFC. Oh, it's always such a bummer when you see that. That one play that you know is that final one, the one that determines everything, and I think that what we just saw there is really it. Three goals in a minute, it is possible, but for a team like Clemson, who has shown that they have the resilience and who have started to really improve here during this fourth game, it's going to be rather difficult for Charleston to get back into this one. First goal of this game, I believe, was in favor of Charleston, so it's been four unanswered after that. So it's unfortunately looking like Clemson are back in form, and Charleston just don't know how to slow them down. And, well, honestly, I don't know how to slow that down either. Beautiful passing play, perfectly executed. And Clemson, I think, are about to wrap this one up in four. Yeah, this might be out of hand already. It might be. I very much can say it will be. But it's Rocket League. There, you, you always have to keep a clause in the contract. You can never say 100% <laughs> certainty that it will be over since once again it's Rocket League that should be enough explanation Iridium trying to get it down the side of Rat with it whichever way you're going to be looking at this so CFC they do we need to get the offense going and they need to break out of their own half but now at this point it actually is physically impossible with a minute left there was a chance had they gotten some miracle goals but now even with a miracle it won't be enough 15 seconds left that's not enough time for four goals all they can do at this point is try and get one for the road to give them some confidence next time they play first off they actually just need to break out of their half in order to do so I don't think they will. This one popping out to the corner, and Iridium will get a chance, but the dunk there is going to deny it outright, and Clemson will finish it off in four, like we said. Clemson win 3-1 to one fashion over the College of Charleston. Fantastic performances out of both teams, but at the end of the day, only one can move on to that top four, and that is Clemson. It is Clemson who moves through. It deserved the one as well. They had the general pace advantage, and if, especially in those first two games, a massive advantage all across the pitch. The problem with CFC is that they tend to fall apart a bit. As soon as they concede one somewhat unfortunate goal, they can't quite pick it back up where they left it, start making mistouches, and it will get worse and worse and worse until it's unrecoverable. And that's when they actually put in a dent once again. It's just too late just like the comeback in this series. Unfortunately so. It really did feel like they had a chance there, but unfortunately the momentum was never fully in their favor, and as a result, they kind of just had to play from behind the whole time. It's hard when you play like that as a team, when you really just let someone get, to them, get the momentum away from you, and they just kind of hold on to it for long enough 
all of a sudden everything really does become difficult and it becomes a much more a much elongated road to recovery especially for a team like charleston where they did show signs of life but every single time they had that little mistake that would set them back they scrambled to recover and get back into the series and well, never really were quite able to do so. Good games out of both sides, though. Nothing to hang your heads on. Really something that both teams should be absolutely proud of. And Hyferia, really something I think Clemson should be proud of. Again, that's their second team. If that's what their second team plays like, I don't even want to know what their first looks like. Well, their first team got knocked out by UCF Academy, so... They might just be able to face them if they do get to the semis. It, that's going to be an interesting match. The main team knocked out by this particular team. If they're able to take revenge and also qualify themselves for a top two spot in that same go, they couldn't really get any better than that. I'd be very surprised if it got better than that. Imagine uh, going to your number one team and going, hey, remember the guys that beat you guys? Yeah, we just beat them. So who's number one now? You know, a little bit of rivalry between building between the squads. But, well, let's see if we can keep this rivalry going here because we're not quite done with the day. We've still got another three matches on our hands, Hyferia. And again, these are all the more important because they are all to determine that top four spot. And while top four might nece not necessarily get you in the money, getting one win once you're in that top four will be enough. First and second place, taking home 500 for second, 1,000 for first, as well as an invitation to that land. And these teams are only going to be a couple rounds out from that. So we don't want to delay you guys. We don't want to let you guys stall any longer so let's get right into the action we're going to take a quick break get all everything set up and when we return even more rocket league here for the cenc southeast invitational this is going to be an exciting day full of a lot of good rocket league which has not ended yet we will see you guys in just a couple moments
everybody and welcome back to the CEN CENC Southeast Invitational. I knew at some point I was going to unfortunately end up messing that one up. The unfortunate part about this one though is I messed it up not only in front of you High Fury but also in front of our esteemed guest. Welcome Wrath to the booth. Congratulations on the win in your last match. My friend, how are you feeling now that you guys have taken yourself one step further to getting to that land? I'm feeling pretty great. We got we got some good confidence going now. We, uh, after two wins in this uh, tournament, we, uh, we got some good momentum. I'm excited for the next game. I can understand why, because at this point, you are now potentially a single win away from the land. And I'll explain to you why, and also to our audience as well. We were talking about this a little bit behind the scenes here, but at this point, of the teams remaining, all except for you guys and one other squad have already made the land. 
We have uh, so many different teams. We have Kennesaw, which has already made the land. We have USF's w number one team, which has already made the land. We have you guys, obviously, in Charleston, which had just battled out to make that first top four spot. Congratulations, like we said, where you guys have secured it. But you've got USF, which has already made the land. We have got FAU, which has made the land. And then UCSF, their, their second team, is technically also looking for the land. But the only other team besides them that is looking for it at the moment is Southern Miss, which is going to play USF in this next match. So... You've got basically a chance here to where you could just make top four, and if everything shakes out right, you've got a chance to just make top four and automatically make the land. Are you looking towards this next matchup, unfortunately, cheering for the underdogs here, or are you just sort of like, hey, let us get to the final and let's make it that way, or is it just sort of, hey, make the land, make the land? Hey, we're trying, we're trying to make this land. I'm super excited. I haven't <laughs> been to one before. I don't think, I don't think any of my teammates have. We really want to, we really want to get a good, you know, visit Orlando, maybe hit up Disney, you know. We uh we want to get this we want to get to land. It would be nice to get the win for sure. We always love winning over here, and uh, <laughs> making it to land would be the the cherry on top for sure. Yeah, I, I personally love taking L's, but how how what do you usually do? <laughs> nice try, Bass. Yeah, I know you can't hold. You're laughing. Um, looking at how are you going to provide those wins? How, what what do you think is your strongest part of the game? Well, we've been uh we've been going to our games very confident, which is nice. Uh, we didn't know anything about our last match. This match, our uh, our first team actually played CFC, so we had a good idea of what we were getting ourselves into, which gave us a little more confidence. And uh, in our next game, I think we're just gonna have to keep playing our game, just keep improving uh, throughout the week, get to the next match, and hopefully, uh, just keep winning, keep running it back how we have been. I mean, Stay you guys have run it back fantastic so far here of the performances you guys have shown on screen every single one of them has been an absolute thriller but again it's going to be about you know keeping up that consistency as you go further in this tournament obviously teams are going to keep getting stronger of the teams remaining is there anybody here that you are either looking forward to playing against you're a little bit fearful from is there any sort of team here that stands out to you guys well uh last week i said i wanted to play ucf and usf which is a it's a big claim they're they're both great teams, but um, but I want to see I want to see USF and UCF second team go at it in this tournament, and maybe we get a Ooh. shot to play UCF's first team because I uh, I've never seen them play, and I want to I want to see how well how uh, good they are. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. Well, we're going to have to find out if you guys get the chance to play them. This next match is going to quite literally determine if you even have a shot at USF, as there's still a chance Southern Miss could upset them. But it's true. we're going to have to see. We're going to have to see here. Thank you so much for coming on, Wrath. We really do appreciate you sticking in here for the interview. Before we let you go, any shout-outs you want to give real quick? Uh, just a shout-out to the Clemson Esports program. Shouts out to everyone watching who's supporting us. That's it. Awesome. Shouts out awesome. to my team. Awesome. I would love to see it. Got to throw in your teammates real quick of as course. well. Thank you so, so much, my friend. Thank you, Rath, for hopping on here. We're going to let you get on with the rest of your day and uh, probably let you sit in the background while you watch this game in anticipation to see if you can get that shot at USF. We're going to have to find out, though. Like I said, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day, my friend. Awesome. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Hyferia, here we go, my friend. We are now down to another one of these potential best of five matches here. There's a chance we could get to game five. I really would hope we get to game five, but there is no guarantee. First, we've got to see who really pulls it out on this one. USF versus Southern Miss. And like we said, Southern Miss with a lot of momentum in their favor. But against a team like USF, it's still going to be rather difficult. Absolutely, it's so momentum can only carry you a certain amount of time. It will only get you a certain uh, particular distance, and uh, against USF, that might just be difficult to actually go the entire way. So the miss coming in here as underdogs, as USF, they're looking incredibly strong throughout the rest of the season, and. They've not really got anything to lose. Yes, they will lose the prize money, but they still make it to that so much wanted a land. That's the big thing here is, is that it's about making the land first and foremost. It seems like that's kind of what's on every single team's mind is that they want to make a land. They don't really care about the prize money. Prize money is great, but when you're a college student who's just trying to you know save every single dollar, that can go out the window with a single class and a single set of books that you need to buy. So right now, they're looking for experience. They're looking for something that can really set them off for the rest of their future, and I think that this land really could be that. We talk about it all the time. It's a great place for connections. It's a great place to meet other people and to meet other teams, and that's what these teams are going 
going for here. They want that experience. They want that land. That is first and foremost in, in their minds. And for USF, it's not really something they actually even have to think about. Like we said, they've already qualified here. So for Southern Miss, it feels like all the pressure is on that team rather than it being kind of equal to both of them. And very often in Rock League, once you're just having fun, once you don't really have anything to lose, that's when you actually start playing better, which is not great for a Southern Miss. They obviously have all the pressure upon them. We did see them earlier today. They, they had some inconsistencies here and there. We're allowed a lot of free space, and they can't be having that right now. I don't think they're going to have as much space as we saw them have earlier today. Yeah, I don't think so either. I think that this is going to be a little bit more of a tightly contested game. We're down to eight teams. At this point, every single team that is here is extremely capable and very ready to take down any of the other squads. I mean, we saw the last one. We got 2-0 in and we were like, all right, I'm not so sure if Charleston is really up to stuff here. They're maybe not going to be able to compete against these squads. And then all of a sudden, they take a win in the next game. So it's one of these things. You can never count a team down and out. You have to give every single team that is here their due respect. And let's see if we can find that due respect here in this first matchup of this game. It is going to be game number one between USF and Southern Miss. I'm rather excited to see how this one goes off. USF in the blue, Southern Miss in the orange. And again, on paper, USF come into this one the heavy favorites, but there is no guarantee if southern miss is able to pop off like we know they can hyferia we absolutely might see that upset that paper very easily burned very easily scrunched and very <laughs> easily just thrown in the bin so on paper it doesn't really mean that much they're gonna have to prove it on the pitch and they get a chance to do so right here right now usf versus southern miss it is a great kickoff to start it off for usf they try and get control and they do manage to do so. Fiend sends it into the corner. Sean following it up, pops it into the center. But Banger, he's just gonna buy this time. Gonna buy time for now here. And I gotta say, this USF roster is rather one that comes with a lot of history behind them. You can see in the tags, they've played in CRL before. So they are no strangers to the absolute pressure they will be feeling here. Well, pressure doesn't seem to be affecting them so far. Fiend into the backboard and Sean is up before you blink. USF on top. USF on top. This is always a, a bit of an awkward scenario. Once you get into this matchup, if you as underdogs start losing, it is very likely that you will continue doing so. Banger already taking it to the skies. They're feeling so incredibly confident. USF already. They're 30 seconds into the game. Have only got a one goal lead and they're already pre-jumped. They are already. They really do feel themselves. And you can understand why a team like USF are always going to be confident in themselves. They have taken some impressive wins against some of the best teams in this nation. They might be able to do another one here against Southern Miss. Like we said, Southern Miss have been battling this out through multiple days of competition. They really have established themselves as a very strong contender. Unfortunately, contention isn't enough here. You need to be a winner if you want to move on. In these one-and-done type of tournaments where there is no elim a second elimination bracket, you need to be able to play at your peak at every single moment. And I will say this, Southern Miss might have given up an early goal, but aside from that, they have looked rather in form. USF, they're starting to stall with... I, I never like seeing that when you're only up by one goal. It's an incredibly scary, and one tiny miss can send your team into a tied game. Sure, you might be feeling incredibly confident, but all of a sudden, a defensive stand that you wouldn't be expecting. That's not one of those, though. Banger finds an open end, puts it through. And like you said, open net, and that's kind of the more concerning part here is that you see the little bit of defensive breakdown on the side of Southern Miss, and that's not something they can afford. They've got to hold strong against a team like USF. And they got to figure out ways to start getting their shots in as well. 90 seconds gone here, and so far it's been all USF offense. They have five shots registered within the first minute and a half. Let's see if they can register a six. They're already back on the prowl once again. Drop down low. Sean able to get there for the follow-up, though. Wants to redirect off the backboard. All they can really do, though, is set up their teammates, and they will not get a shot. Oh, wait. Yes, they will. Sean will sneak one in. I thought that they might be retreating. You saw two of the USF players back off on this one. Fiend goes up, and you can see that Banger doesn't want to attack it, so Sean decides to cut rotation. Surprises not only me, but surprises Southern Miss and puts USF up by three. USF doing USF things, sneaking one through. 
and getting the lead to three. This is quickly getting out of hand, especially uh, directly after kickoff. They already have to suffer, suffer another attack. Leighton manages to punch it out to the side as one and only gets a demo on the net. Bean still in the correct position. Now on the counter attack, let's see what he can do. Tries to force it through, does indeed stay in control of the play. On top of that, so much work being done just by Bean alone. And then Sean pops it back to the edge of the box. Four eyes up sick. Stuff quickly shuts that down. And the other way, and you want to talk about shutdown, let's talk about one and only in this game for right now. We talked about them as pretty much that golden striker on the side of Southern Miss earlier today. Now in this game, they don't even have a single shot registered. The only shot registered for Southern Miss at this point is Four Eyes Optic, another really lethal striker. But it goes to show you, if you can shut down one and only, you can really shut down the team here. Southern Miss have not been able to find a lot of offensive momentum due to their star-studded striker being rather muted. Maybe they have a chance to speak a little bit louder here. Can they get into offense and find something? They can find a shot and they can find a goal. Perfect timing here. Usually it's Caster Curse. This time Caster Blessing. And I will gladly take the change. Caster Blessing indeed. Yeah. One and only. Yes. Nicely twirling up for that one. And puts it into the back of the net. Southern Miss. They managed to get one on the board. But they need two more. In two minutes, more than possible for USF. I don't think they're going to let those up that easily. They're going to be trying to restrict the movement even more and put them in their own back half a shot. Almost phenomenally spikes it down. Keyword being almost the one and only. It's into a spray. Could have a broken out. His teammates need to do a passing field banger. <laughs> I have no word for that one. I was about to start trying to talk and make some sort of exclamation of just random sounds, which is 90% of my casting anyways, but I didn't really know how to describe that one. I know how to describe this one. It's unfortunately a defensive mistake on the side of Southern Miss, but yeah, chaos starting to reign supreme here, and somehow, some way though, USF still look comfortable. No matter how chaotic the pace of play might develop, it still seems like somehow, some way, USF have got a read on every play that has happened. Just to go on to that, making random sounds. Isn't any language making random sounds until you speak the language? We're, we're not having this discussion on I'm not doing this for what is the fifth <laughs> time today. You brought this up already enough times, all right? We're not going back into your normal <laughs> philosophies of nonsense, okay, Hyperia? Because we already have enough nonsense on the pitch here. 70 seconds left, and the shot's still ringing off for USF, who can't seem to put one into the back of the net. And there you go, some more random sounds that have turned into a sentence or something similar. And, uh, well, the sentence goes on to say one thing and one thing only. USF most likely taking game number one. Look, I just planted the seed in your mind, and now I know every single time you talk, you start to think about this one. And Leighton, he wants a ring and to make sure that his name is branded in somebody's memory as well. But now it's been down the other end, Sean. And you do. Off the side, will gets off the ceiling. Fiend is getting bumped about on the backboard, or is bumping people about. It doesn't really matter. He is there. He is in that position. And USF with a three goal lead with 30 seconds remaining. A pretty like that, like that could open up an avenue, but they don't find it. And that is the problem for Southern Miss. They have a few opportunities, and they're very hard to come by. But when they do get them, they don't quite capitalize it to the fullest extent. That's the big difference here is, is that you're seeing when USF do get an opportunity, they at least put on a threatening shot that flusters the defense and makes them uncomfortable. Southern Miss at this point haven't really been able to make USF uncomfortable on well, either side of the pitch. Whether it's offense or defense, both USF seem to be flowing around this pitch without a care. No restrictions whatsoever. And that's the reason they're going up for shots like this. Banger pre-jumped that one from basically midfield. They weren't able to find the back of the net there, but it goes to show you USF with a rather confident victory here in game number one and can you really blame them at a four to one scoreline high fear yet? I'd be pretty confident as well I'd, I'd certainly be comfortable for sure 14 shots for them as well whereas only three for Southern Miss even if it was a hundred percent conversion rate on the side of Southern Miss it still wouldn't be enough and that is the problem that they're looking uh, towards. They're facing a massive cliff and they have no clue how to climb, but they need some kind of pathway. They need to find it. Otherwise, they will mm, drop in. They, they could just drop in three here because USF, that's how strong they look.
Yeah, that really is a difficult scenario here for Southern Miss. But hey, that's the benefit of collegiate esports here is that this is a team. It is not just the three of them. They've most likely got a coach behind the scenes. As talking to them right now, you can see Southern Miss taking a second to ready up here. One and only has not yet. Most likely because they're talking to their staff behind the scenes, trying to reassess themselves, trying to figure out a way to get back into this one because... I can guarantee you that was not the result that they were looking for in game number one. Not only because of the fact that they didn't take the win, but also the fact that Southern Miss didn't necessarily look up to par. They just didn't give themselves the opportunities necessary. And against a team like USF, you need to find those chances. It's not necessarily about making every single shot go into the back of the net. We mentioned this before. It's about putting on that pressure, getting the team uncomfortable, and getting those opportunities. Getting those opportunities, a pivotal part, and then also converting them fiend. Might just have a display of that. Sean already pre-jumping. Can he read the play? No, they're both missing. Now Banger needs to put in some defensive effort. And this is one of those opportunities. One and only. Two players committed over USF. Instead of trying to take your time. You, oh my word. Never mind. Scratch that. It's, I guess not a good analysis. It's latent. Convert. Ooh, that's unfortunate for the side of USF there. You can see it all started from that one bump on the backboard. Sean immediately sent into an awkward position afterwards and tried to recover, but never really could. But hey, that's how you do this. This is what we mean when we say take advantage of the opportunity. Southern Miss do exactly that. They see a little bit of vulnerability on the side of USF and pounce while they've got a shot. Can they do it again, though? A 2-0 lead for the team that just got taken down in a 4-1 to one fashion would be absolutely massive for their change in confidence. No such luck though. They are not going to be able to continue that offense and instead it's now USF's turn to try and equalize. Sean and to the side. Phoenix there to try and take control. Gets it past one. You know, a boost in the tank. Not, new, not enough at least to try and get back to the play. One and only. Pops it into the corner. Could clear away. Sean dives in and misses the play. Four eyes up six. Zero boost, not going to be able to generate that much. And Banger, staying close to the play, one and only. He's got a touch Fiend, taking it down the right-hand side of him, pinches it through. That's way too far. It's your banger has to pop it right back in. Sean is up for it. Sean Ooh. bangs it off the post, but one and only. He's going the wrong way with it. Scary moment, but it's still Southern Miss holding on. Scratch that. No, Leighton. Let's lean the way. I like this, though. I like what we're seeing out of USF here. They're realizing that the defense is starting to re uh, to understand how they want to play here. And, oh, my word, I was going to say, are trying to get in a little bit more clever shots. This one just a banger on target, pun intended. Beautiful pass in perfect placement. Fiend bar down and in, and what a way for USF to equalize. As you say, the Southern Miss defense was picking up. It's USF who completely tear it apart with a boomer like that. USF right back into the game. Scary stuff for Southern Miss. Sean off the top rope. Banger. To the center. Sean with a pass back right into Fiend. This plays like that, and that can look exquisite, but also open up vulnerability on the back half now that they haven't converted. Sean in the defense end, homering and back. That pitch just goes straight on target. Fiend got a touch, and this is exactly why those plays are dangerous. What on earth did we just witness here? Sean takes a half a second, and before they can even take a deep breath in to try and recover, already one and only is there to slam that one home. We talked about them being the catalyst for this offense before, and I still stand by that moment. If one and only is on, you've got a great chance at winning the game. When that player gets muted, you're going to have to try and recover, but this game, no such luck for USF. They have not been able to keep a muzzle on that player, and as a result, they've been talking loud and proud, keeping their team up to to one here with three minutes remaining but like i said with three minutes remaining there is still technically a chance usf just need one good goal and they are equalized yet again so it can't happen very quickly but if another goal lands of course that's going to make that a different story fiend up for it early tries to force it underneath four, four eyes up taken one and only had different views on that play sean 50s in out to the side banger turning in on target one and only out to the side takes it for a straw fiend popping all in to get it past one and get to past two maybe even past three but not on target though nobody there to try and finish that one off one and only ice in his face takes it past banger unscathed but it's still fiend in the midfield trying to capitalize that's a great layup from his opponent for fiend 
Uh, like you said, great layup, but from the opponent. Not exactly what they were looking for there, but you can't really blame Four Eyes on that one. That was a do-or-die scenario when Leighton and One are both out at midfield trying to pass, and it doesn't really succeed. It's up to you to either bang that one off the backboard or kind of just let the goal go in any ways. Almost inevitable, unfortunate scenarios, but Southern Miss not quite able to give up yet. They've got two minutes now and plenty of time to try and take back that lead and keep this series alive here. It is not necessarily the end of the series if USF wins, but we've seen this already here tonight. Those 2-0 to zero leads are rather lethal in a best of five. The reverse sweep, not impossible, but very unlikely. Let's see what Banger can do. Tries to set up a clip and play instead. Has to clip the ceiling to get back into the defensive rotation. Sean up for it once again. Good free flip actually sends him on a decent track, but not enough boost to try and adjust his pathing a bit more. Good chance and a one and only. And they're really discovering to go in for those quick challenges. And look at that. They're getting opportunities. But they're also missing those opportunities. Sean, he won't miss those. No, he will not. And this is beautiful from Sean because this just looks like a standard air dribble, but you can see how intricate it was. Sets himself up ready in case either one or four go for the challenge. It'll just slam right back into him. As a result, they don't even try. They know that they can't get that one around him. And as soon as the air dribble starts, it is already over. USF showing they've got absolute consistency when it comes to their offense. And really, they've shown consistency pretty much everywhere but defense here. Not to say that their defense has been poor, but they've just left a couple of gaps that have allowed Southern Miss to get into this one. One save through almost four minutes of play kind of goes to show you that they really are focusing on offense beyond anything else. As long as they can outscore their opponents, they can win. And yeah, as simple as that statement sounds, it's not always the strategy for a lot of these teams. But for USF right now, it absolutely is. They are going gung-ho when it comes to their offense and hoping that it'll be enough. Sean will show why that's a strategy and show why it really is an effective one. Yeah, you can kind of compare it to... A, a machine gun. You don't necessarily go for pure accuracy. You just go for a lot. And mm. at some point, one of them will strike. USF, they have uh, gotten plenty of hits right here. 4-2 to two is the scoreline. And USF, they might just be able to take this on the two, a match point of their own. And then Southern Miss, they're going to have to fight back and fight back hard. Pass same field. Fiend. It's Banger taking a short late and in the way. Final 30 seconds, and right now, Southern Miss, they have to get into the attack. I do like that Southern Miss are showing a lot of priority to their defense, though, because I feel like if they had just not prioritized their defense at all, it would have just been an absolute bloodbath where we see USF put shot after shot after shot into the back of the net. They are starting to do exactly that. Their offensive efficiency has definitely turned up as the game has continued here, but... They're not quite done. There's still plenty of time here for Southern Miss to turn this one around, and I think a lot of this is going to be two things. Turning around their defense, making it a little bit more sustained overall, and then also just turning those into more effective counterattacks. We saw a lot of times where Southern Miss did spend time on their opponent's half. They spent a decent amount of time on their opponent's half, but if you get into the opponent's half and then, you know, just kind of dawdle there for about five seconds and then immediately retreat, does it really count? I would say no, and that's unfortunately what we've seen out of Southern Miss on so many opportunities here, is they go into their opponent's half, spend a couple seconds on offense, and then immediately retreat to not allow USF an easy counterattack. And as a result, USF take their second win in a row. Like we said, Southern Miss are very much still in this one, high area, but if they want a shot at that reverse sweep, there are adjustments that need to be made. And I might just be fearing for the worst here. USF, they look, un they look like they have everything under control they start styling, but they still have one player back in the defensive end. So even when USF are feeling a bit frisky and starting to pull out ridiculous plays, they did get punished, but not punished enough. So they're missed. They have two shots, both of those converting into goals. It just won't be enough if that stays the way. USF are well on their way to get into that next. Did you just sneeze? I did, but I muted myself. So you oh, can bless hear you. It. Oh, thank you. I just well, saw your now, head move. Very confusing. Oh, interesting. Now you've completely thrown <laughs> off my train of thought, so I don't know how I was going to follow that one up, but I can still follow it up with another sentence nonetheless. Southern Miss are a single game away from getting eliminated here. It is back against the walls for this team, and they need to pull out all the stops if they want a shot. But I feel like we can't overemphasize this enough, Hyperia. They absolutely have a shot. They have shown they can play against a team like USF. All they need to do is clean up a couple little places, and they are right back into this one. Yeah, that's It, it sounds very simple, but USF, they are certainly not going to make this simple. So they're missed.
We saw them earlier tonight. They had a phenomenal performance. We're able to kind of cleanse out the opponents. Well, they have to try and do this in a reverse a sweep. They have no other choice. They've not been invited to the land and banger. Well, he puts the banger on. Oh my word. Well, that's a heck of a way to start off this game here. USF already up 1-0 within four seconds. And, uh, well, hopefully we can show you guys that in just a second. I was about to say, let's switch over to the screen here. and Hopefully we can get you guys that little bit of a view. Luckily enough, though, you get it on the replay. You get to see exactly why we have been hyping up USF from the minute they got into this one and why we will continue to. Sean puts another sh shot on target, but it is not going to be enough. How about the follow-up, though? Fiend also off target. But my oh my, USF has started game number three with a bang. Well, yes, literally, he has started this <laughs> scoring off on the side of USF. I know I'm, I never know whether you do that on purpose. I will assume. Half and half. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Oh, it's just, it's, <laughs> if you fake the ball as well, and it's it's you know you don't necessarily intend. Just say you intended to fake, and mean he might just say he intended to score this or miss it. That's what I mean. He he intended to fake this. Oh, 100%. That was a tactical fake in every single sense of the word. Look at this. He gets one and only and Leighton to dive on it. Four Eyes just going to have to sit there and let it go. And so Sean's got an open net. Beautifully played. Five-headed as ever from the absolute incredible player. But unfortunately, it's not really going to help out Southern Miss here who really need the momentum more than their opponents. They're backed against the wall. Like we said, they lose this one. is the end of their series as well as the end of their tournament and the end of their chances at that land altogether. One team that's probably cheering for USF right now though is Clemson they would not only like to get that revenge like we said they want that shot at that rematch but they also want as little options to try and avoid that land as possible Southern Miss one of three teams left in this tournament that have not found a spot at the land yet so if they get eliminated here that makes it so that Clemson only needed one other team to get eliminated and they will secure themselves that spot so right now they're cheering for USF and USF cheering for themselves as well up three to zero within the first minute 30 they can certainly be cheering for themselves because the play that they are pulling out this one a, a bit awkward but Fiend was still with a good read on it reads the crossbar down those are pesky reads and the USF put themselves up 3-0 after not even 90 seconds of play time that spells trouble for Southern missing the need to try and get out of it as soon as they can Oh boy, that is uh, not going to help them get out of it though because Fiend, technically Banger, is going to put in another goal here. This is just a goal steal for the sake of uh, I pre-jumped this one already, so I'm getting the shot. And uh, hey, listen, Fiend, stat pat, my friend, I get it. You know what I mean? Just try and keep your stats going up because now you're currently two goals for three shots. Technically the highest shooting percentage on the team, quite literally because you stole Banger's shot. But you know, it's what it is. Sean though now is going to go two for four upping their percentage not necessarily up uh, upping and overdoing the two for three but honestly when you're up five to zero it's the small competitions right yeah you start having those internal competitions because of southern miss they're getting outplayed I, I, it's always hard in those scenarios but this is one of those ones where usf they are incredible at the game and they're displaying that with a 5-0 lead within two minutes southern miss it's unfortunate because they have shown themselves early tonight to be a phenomenal team. Then USF comes, makes them look a bit silly. That's, oh my word. But if you can get close to shots like that, you are nearly at the top of Rocket League in general. The Southern Miss, they're well on their way as well. Just need a, a few tweaks to try and get there. Yeah, I would 100% agree with you on that one. Unfortunately, it's one of these things where we said it on paper coming into this. USF are by far the stronger team. They've had CRL competitions. They have had other competitions in other different collegiate leagues. And have had impressive performances all across the board. I mean, Sean displaying that with the CRL Spring 2021 contender. Really showing you that this team has been around the block. Has had really good experiences in the past. And continue to do so here. For Southern Miss, this could just be dipping their toe into what could be the future of their experience in esports. This team, oh my word, very experienced and very prepared for what might come, but unfortunately just not quite experienced enough for today against a team like USF. So the miss, though, I do want to give a round of applause for the efforts that they have put out here. It is still technically possible to come back, but without a single goal in three minutes and with the two minutes remaining at a five-goal deficit, the chances are looking rather bleak near impossible. But uh, hey, you know... I'll keep out hope. I'd like to see Southern Miss pull off this comeback because if they do, it might just be the greatest comeback I've ever seen in Rocket League history. 
It 100% will be. It just got worse. It just got harder. USF, they just set a bigger challenge for Southern Miss every single time. And that bigger challenge might not have won to be taken on by Southern Miss with 1 minute and 50 remaining. A six goal deficit. It won't be one of the possible. Sure, just keep on playing 2v2. There is a chance. 3v3, USF is going to make it 7-0. I... Yeah, I, I'd have to agree with you. In a 1v1, this is a comebackable position. In a 2v2, if you're trying to be a little bit exaggeratory, then yeah, maybe. In a 3v3, I think sometimes you just got to be realistic and we got to validate the credibility that we have as Rocket League analysts and say this comeback's not happening. Oh boy, I'm going to realize, you want to know really why this comeback is probably not happening at this point? Even if Southern Miss hit 100% of the shots they've taken in this game, they would still be at the same scoreline. They haven't taken a shot in this game. So far, Southern Miss has been held to zero shots versus the 14 that USF have thrown at them. That If that doesn't show the domination that USF is displaying here in game number three, uh, I don't know what will. Was the ceiling reset into pass on Banger? I would have been shown some domination as well. Now, Banger getting a lot of time, and you, see, you can see on the side of Southern Miss, they're just incredibly scared of whatever USF can do. Banger and being left all by his lonesome in defense. Still no shot ringing through Southern Miss. They're just a, a bit afraid. And fair enough because USF, they have been pulling out Banger plays. They have been incredibly quick and they're trying to switch it up still. USF are making Southern Miss keep on guessing. And this is just an awkward scenario where the timer just has to tick now. Yeah, unfortunately, it's one of these things where you're just kind of waiting for that clock to hit zero here because the outcome will be the same nonetheless. But I got to give it to Southern Miss. They still put on a heck of a show here today. They really did run against an opponent, which most teams would back down and be become rather hesitant against in pretty much any scenario. So for them to throw everything at their opponents, really give them a run for their money, making a couple of these games rather competitive. Good on you. Seriously, fantastic performance out of Southern Miss. You guys gave it a heck of an effort. But unfortunately, at the end of the day, there can only be one winner, and that winner will be USF. They might even get an eighth goal for the road. No such luck. Let's see if we can at least get a Brazil. Please, can we get a, an authentic Brazil? Put in one here, Southern Miss, and get yourselves a chance. Oh, yeah. Yes, we will. There we go. Last second, and who else but one and only? They know it as well. One and only gets it. It's just perfectly placed it into the midfield. Banger there to finish it off then, of course. Knows the meme, wants to accommodate us. A great pass still. And also, on the side of Southern Miss, that's the, the best thing about this entire exchange. That they're still saying, GG's, fellas. They recognize the talent, they appreciate it, and they realize that this one was not for them. Yeah, unfortunately, at the end of the day, sometimes you have to recognize that you're not necessarily up to the standard of what your opponents are and that they're going to just be a little bit outclassing you on the day. But here's the thing. That's the only way you get better in Rocket League. I love talking about this on stream. The positives from taking a loss like this are recognizing where you made your mistakes and being able to capitalize upon those in the future. This is a game I hope that Southern Miss studies here because in certain games they kept it close and certain ones it got out of hand and the difference between those games is something they need to be aware of. If they want a shot at taking down teams like USF, the only way you can do so is by, well, playing teams like USF, getting absolutely, uh, you know, completely decimated and then coming back the next time even stronger. There is no way but up here for this team. So for the Southern Miss, I hope you guys stay resilient. I hope you keep on trucking here with your esports program because you guys looked great today. All you need is those little bit of a Adjustments and you can start taking down teams like USF in the future. However, for now, not quite going to happen. USF will move on to that top four, taking our second spot behind Clemson 2 to get into that top four and get themselves one step closer to that money because, again... As we mentioned, I fear you, USF has already qualified for the land. They don't necessarily need a spot at the land yet, which is why this is all the more important for Clemson for this win in particular. We have two teams left that haven't made land. Clemson, which is already in top four, and then US or UCF2, which is currently waiting in another top eight. So, oh boy, hype stuff is getting spicy, my friend. Stuff is certainly getting spicy, and in order to remove the spice from our mouth for a bit, or just in general from our lives, we are going to go to a tiny little break, but up next, there will be plenty of spies. As you say, there's still those playoff spots to play for. Kennesaw versus UCF Knights coming up next. Don't go anywhere. We shall be right back.
It's just like, man, you gotta have that time where you just like disconnect from the, from the scene, just the, the, the race. Like, and, and it's a race that I've created in my head, you know? But you have to step away from it.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the CENC Southeast Invitational Virtual, sponsored by the U.S. Army. Once again, my name is Bass on the Pass, and joined alongside me here today is the lovely Hyferia and another special guest as well. We want to wake, welcome Banger into the booth. Banger, welcome here, my friend. Congratulations on taking the win in your last series. How are you feeling now that you got that under your belt? I'm feeling pretty good. Um, it was... You know, I mean, it was kind of competitive in the first two games. Um, we we're, I mean, we weren't worried. We we're kind of impressed. Um, to be honest, we saw the champ tournament winner tag uh, when we got in. We we're like, okay. But then they, then they put up a, you know, good match. And that, that game three, we sort of figured things out and um, we started styling on them a little bit. But yeah, it, it was a fun series. It's a dagger straight to my heart to see the champ tag and then immediately gets made fun of for that one. Ouch. That's yeah. gonna hurt for me, my friend. But it's <laughs> all right because I'm not the ones playing on the pitch here today. You guys were the ones doing so. And, well, this is an interesting one because you guys have already technically qualified yourselves for the land here. So motivations for this. Is it about trying to find other opponents that potentially could go to the land and, you know, sort of scouting your opponents here? Or are you guys just kind of in this one for that grand prize? You want that $1,000 and to take home the championship. Yeah, I mean, the grand prize would be nice. Um, I know UCF is in this, so bragging, bragging rights always plays into that whenever they're in a tournament with us. And, um, yeah, scouting the competition a little bit, um, you know, that, that definitely plays into it. And we're just hyped for uh, the land come November and um, just excited about everything that's going on over here. Absolutely. And well, look, looking at those bragging rights, of course, if, when you get into a matchup with teams, you would like to have the bragging rights over. Does that bring any extra nerves? Um, I don't know if it brings nerves. I, I think the guys are just a little bit more focused, really trying to win um, just that much harder. Uh, you know, you're always trying your best to rematch, but it feels like there's a different energy about it um, in those games that you play against teams that maybe – you know, if you have a team that knocks you off of play, playoff contention or any of that, you, you remember those things. So um, that and, of course, like UCF, you know, they just they're, they're right down the road. We know a lot of the guys over there and just want to beat them, really. I like it. I like the little bit of rivalry that's developing here. And, well, there's another little bit of a rivalry that is building here. Not sure if you were able to catch the interview that happened before you in our last matchup, but Clemson is gunning for you guys right now. Clemson wants a shot at rematch with you guys, not because of the fact that they played you, but because you knocked out Clemson's number one team. And crazy enough, Clemson's number one team might have dropped out early in this competition, but their number two team hasn't. Matter of fact, they were the first team to qualify for the semifinals here before you guys. So they're hoping that they get a chance at you guys in the finals. Any words you want to give out to your quote-unquote new rivals here as they uh, sort of await a matchup or a chance to fight you guys? Uh, I mean, Clemson can say what they want. Um, you know, if we beat their other team, we'll beat them too. Uh, <laughs> sort of. It's, you know, I'm, I'm not really expecting much from them, but we'll see. I know we're going to bring it every match, and uh, they better be ready because uh, we want that grand prize. I like it. Spiciness coming out of Banger here today. <laughs> Love to see it. Love to hear it, my friend. Thank you for hopping in on the booth with us. We're going to let you go. Let you go talk to your team and celebrate your win here. But before you do go, any shout outs you want to give to anybody that might be watching? Yeah, shout out to the teammates. Uh, they do, you know, they're putting in the work and uh, we're getting better every day. Uh, and they're always a lot of fun to play with. And shout out to our sub commit. Um, even though he's not on the field that often, you know, he subs in when we need him. And he does a lot of stuff behind the scenes, just helping us with scheduling and uh, different stuff with the club and competitive side too. So um, shout out to him as well. And uh, yeah, that's it. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for hopping in the booth with us here, Banger. We're going to let you go. Like we said, go celebrate with your team and uh, wish you luck in the rest of this tournament. Hopefully you have another really successful run. Yeah. Thanks guys. It was great. Much appreciated. Much appreciated. All right, Hyfe. We are down. We are moving on here, my friend. We've got the first two winners of the semifinal, or excuse me, quarterfinals here, making it so that Clemson 2 and also USF are our first two winners. But now it's time to get on to the back half of this day. We're going to have FAU versus UCF 2 and then UCF 1 versus KSW here. Kennesaw going to try and punch their ticket in here, but at this point, it's really not going to be eyes on that first matchup, but more the second one. FAU versus USF 2 or UCS UCF. 
UCF2. So many Fs here in this tournament mm -hmm. that you're going to have to try and keep track of them all. But for UCF2, it's an important one because like we said, they're the only other team besides Clemson in this tournament remaining that does not have a spot at land. So we're getting down to it, my friend. Every single matchup from here on out is going to be a nail biter. And oh boy, I'm very ready to get into it. Ooh, a lot on the line, certainly for these teams to play for. And we've just talked to Banger, and he's ready to take on Clemson, at least when it comes to that moment. But as you say, we have another matchup up for it. Before we go into that, we are going to go to a tiny little break once again. Make sure to stay tuned because you do not want to miss these matches. See you back in a bit.
everybody, and welcome back to the CENC Southeast Invitational. We are getting right underway here in match number one of this best of five. We're going to give a little bit of an intro, but, uh, well, players don't want to wait. Hi, Fury. We are back once again. It is Kennesaw versus UCS, UCF Knights. Winner of this one will be the third team to make the top four. And uh, this is an interesting one because both teams have already qualified for the land, so this one just a little bit for bragging rights. Absolutely, those brag and rise, incredibly important. There was always grudges, and as soon as you have the advantage of say, saying, shut up, I beat you in a best of five, already <laughs> brings a massive advantage with it. Kennesaw and UCF, they're going to be fighting hard, but UCF, they have to clench it up a bit in defense. And they almost broke through. Gonna have to see if they can actually find themselves an early goal here, though. Both of these teams extremely capable. It's really about whoever starts off on the right foot. Kensaw, if that could be this one right here, right now, getting an early goal. Oh my word, it would be massive for them, and they will Ooh. find it. It's on the back of an own goal. It got me a little bit nervous there, but uh, well, it'll take. It'll be enough. Kensaw with her early goal. Tyro, oh yeah, but I mean that's just pure panic. That was not really necessary. UCF Knights, they give up a goal, and it could just be a costly one. Let's see whether they'll be able to bring one back as for out to the sides. Dolo gets it into a, a demo situation. Relieve some pressure now. Can relieve some even more pressure as for gets it further along the pitch. Darf. A very simple clear away, but a double commit from UCF that might just cause trouble. Or Ooh. actually, no, it won't. As for that is not a shot you should be missing. Bambi or Santi, rather, might just be able to clear it up, but also he gets a nine. I cannot believe this. UCF somehow, some way, have still not found their first goal, and they will not off of that either. Despite multiple chances on net, counted at six, it took a seventh in order to find it. Finally, UCF will equalize after a flurry of shots. That was bound to be happening. It's Asfura who finally breaks through, and within the first two minutes, they already have a seven shot to rack up on the side of UCF, whereas only one for Kennesaw. They needed to make more shots, or, well, at least it'll be incredibly lethal since it is apparent that from these first two minutes, Kennesaw, they're not going to get too many opportunities. And Asfura, he will create another one up the crossbar. He goes, Bambi, placing it right down the center, puts UCF up in front. I think we got to give credit to Asfura on this one, though. Completely guided that one down and set it up beautifully for Bambi there. And, uh, well, you don't really get an easier goal than that. And so far, UCF, despite not having an easy way into this game, have found themselves with the lead. Good recovery after that early goal from Kensaw, but not quite able to find a second goal is the team in blue yet. We'll go back onto offense for only a moment, though, because here comes the counterattack. Bambi sneaks one in, but Tyro with an easy clear on out. But it won't be enough to end the offense overall. UCF starting to develop a midfield presence here, and with just about half the game remaining, you don't want to start to, to see UCF lock this down. KSW need to find themselves some sort of offense here. They are not quite able to do so yet. Locked into their half once again and at the mercy of another UCF offense. Bambi from the 50, Santi pops it up. It goes up for the second tap as well. Spikes it down. <laughs> Very solid double tap, and he makes it look so incredibly simple. Oh, my word. Yeah, makes it look simple, but there's nothing simple about this one. The narrowest of angles and with the front of that extremely long Dominus slots that one in underneath the bar. 2.24 left on the clock. Plenty of time for a comeback at a KSW here, but it is not going to be easy by any stretch of the imagination. They need to find themselves some offense overall here, and, well, they need to find themselves some more shots just in total. UCF, a total of 12 shots through just about three minutes of play. Meanwhile, Kensaw, only about one. So, Hyperia, as it stands right now, this is a rather one-sided affair. Yes, the scoreline isn't too out of hand, but the offenses are starting to become. Their offenses are so lethal. UCF, I mean, not necessarily lethal. They have 14 shots and only three goals, but at some point, you will suffocate. You don't have another option than to concede a goal. Santi popping that across the center. Dolo <coughs> makes me choke on air. <laughs> the goal to, gets it into the corner. Oh my word! That was that went the entire wrong way. No goal thus far, though. And speaking of going the wrong way right now, this is not exactly how UCF wanted this one to go. They'd rather have an easy way out of this first game, but no such luck. Kennesaw starting to really put on the pressure here, but only momentarily. 
Bambi all of a sudden goes the other way and puts in a fourth and I'll be honest, I'm a little bit astonished. No one approaches this until it's far too late. Bambi with free time and space and all of a sudden you see up, up by three. He just flips his entire way through simple stuff for UCF, or at least once again, they make it look simple. But here, Tyro goes uh, charging on through the net as for a nicely waiting patience in the defense is an important one. Durf challenging as for as for will come out. Victor Boomer across the pitch. Tyro sends it into the corner. Bambi cuts in rotation, gets it further. Santi 50 with Dolo in the mid air. Tyro turning in, he has to engage in a bit with Bambi there. And they're so quick on the side of UCF Knights, and every single time you might think you have a free ball, there is a player there. Yeah, they are far too quick. They are opening, or excuse me, closing down that open space and just kind of shutting down the team overall. And UCF really taking advantage of every single opportunity they are given here. Team in orange absolutely dominating so far, but this is only game number one of a best of five. I know the trend here tonight has been rather overwhelming wins in favor of the team that, well, wins it, obviously, but... This one might be a little bit different. Both these teams have already qualified for the land, so they have by far absolutely proven that they are capable teams and rather threatening teams at that. Now it's time for Kennesaw to try and prove that to us here. With only about 40 seconds left and a single goal, they need to just get some offense together here. And it's not going to be easy by any stretch of the imagination, especially with Bambi doing stuff like that. Flip reset to try and set up Asfura, but not quite able to do so. So instead, Kennesaw now going to get themselves a chance on offense. And... Again, this game is out of hand, Hyperia, but if they can at least get a goal for the road, that'll do wonders for their confidence. And usually it's the other way around, where Kennesaw, they had an incredibly strong start, and are on the, on the weaker end of closing this one out. I think that's mainly due to UCF just starting to accelerate their play and really starting to play up to the level they know they can set for themselves as UCF. They do take home game number one. How do we see another sweep here today? If we see another sweep, my friend, I, I swear, this is just going to be something's in the air at that point where it's just destined to get sweep on sweep on sweep on sweep. We haven't only had sweeps here. We did see a 3-1, which is not a sweep technically, although it felt very much like it after a 5-0 response from the team after that game to finish it out. But... This one doesn't feel like a sweep overall. It just kind of feels like Kennesaw took a second to really find some offense together. And while they didn't necessarily find a lot of offense, it felt like they never really were given the chance and kind of just let UCF control the pace of play in that game. If they can get a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more in the face of UCF, I think they're going to be able to shut down their offense a lot, as well as also get an offense for themselves as well. But it's up to the team in blue to do that. KSW at this point have shown really good potential. Now it's time to really execute upon that potential, though. Yeah, you have to execute. That's the most important part. You can all have all the potential, but if you fail at the moment where it matters the most, you won't be shining through with that potential as we go into game number two, an important one for Kennesaw. I think if they drop this one, they might be heading towards a victory for UCF, or at least we'll, we'll be heading towards it. At this moment for game number two, Bambi getting it across the pitch. Durf sending that one right back in. Santi takes out Tyro of the equation. As it is a dolo popping that into Bambi. Now the question is, is can Kennesaw take advantage of this early offense? Oh my word, they might actually get scored on instead. They will indeed from an early offense to an immediate retreat here. UCF in the blink of an eye score their first goal off the back of a Santi dunk. What on earth? <laughs> That's just an unfortunate one. Anyone can score those, but UCF... They were already looking like a favorite. Now, they even cement themselves more as in that position. Santi failing to get the second tap as Fura. Still back in defense, gets the pass one Tyro. Now to the center, Bambi. And the clear away, pops it forward. As Fura, beat up by Dolo. Dolo, still to the center, Bambi. Gets it to the backboard, but Durf will be there. 50, Santi gets destroyed in that one. Completely out muscled doesn't really matter since they're able to pop out another attack and right away Santi sealing the boost it pinches it to the center so it has a free ball look for Santi on the backboard they're styling already on the side of UCF yeah they really are they have confidence going into this one and well with a good reason they have shown that they can display some fantastic stuff on offense when they get the chance and well they're getting a whole lot of chances at that so far not a registered shot for UCF but to be fair it's because of shots like this ripping off on the other end Kennesaw really starting to put on the pressure here, but can they find a goal to show for it? 
No such luck so far. 90 seconds into this one, and it's a stalemate for now. Maybe that can change right here. Asfura trying to set up his teammate. Not quite able to get it past the defense, but Dolo in an awkward position against Bambi, and the offense will continue. UCF on the prowl here. They're going to start to try to boost Starb to keep the team uncomfortable and wait for their opportunity. Luckily enough, though, Dolo will break this one out, and KSU now a chance to go the other way. Chance to go the other way, but will they be able to take the chance? Asfura going to be able to answer that question here. Pass out to Santi in the midfield. And the clear away, not quite as strong as they would have liked. Santi now forced to rotate back. Bambi still lurking, has been held out of the equation, but there he goes. He entered the offensive as third as Tyro. Pops it away into Dolo. As Furia now has an open net, converts Ooh. not as he pops off the crossbar. That's an unfortunate one. The lead will remain one, but Bambi going up through the skies. You have to take him out, and that's exactly what he did. As Furia, the goat at hitting crossbars. I, I, I've got to say, I said a little bit unfortunate for Asfura so far throughout this series. I think he's hit the crossbar four times or something like that. Accuracy, not necessarily the best friend here of the UCF Knights, but luckily enough, they can still hold on to the lead for now. Up by one with only about two and a half minutes remaining. They just need to hold on here. Oh, but that's a lot easier said than done. Wait a minute, maybe... No. What? I, I, yeah, I don't know. Take this one away from me. I don't know what I just witnessed. <laughs> I mean, the goal gets taken away from Santi as well he, as he tries to bust it. Here he goes as far to the sky, to the back, oh, oh. Santi pops it down. And that is certainly a play that has potential. But as far turns right back in for the second attempt. You can see UCF, they just have the control every single time. They have to get bumped out of the play. Bambi now going underneath third. They able to convert that to an attack for Kennesaw. They're still under the gun. They're under the gun, but they're not quite done yet. They are still putting on a ton of pressure against their opponents and only need a single goal to finally bring this one back into their favor here. Not quite able to do so. Bambi completely dismantling everybody here. Durf has to retreat rather quickly there. Kennesaw threw everything at their offense. Luckily enough, they did not get punished. Actually, they might get rewarded going the other way with a solid offense altogether now. Uh-oh, but only for a moment. Santi with an oh net and won't take the shot. UCF have done this a couple of times now. They're starting to get these open nets and these good opportunities and they just don't seem to punish on them. I can understand why, but it also makes me a little bit nervous. Guys, all it takes is one good goal and all of a sudden we are all tied up and it could be this. No such luck. Shot off target. They, they can't miss this one, right? No, but they can almost get it stolen. As for a almost stolen by Santee, but still will get credited. This is always such an awkward scenario. As far as he's broken through, he sees Santi and he sees one final opponent. He doesn't manage to get that victory there as well. Get the goal for himself and only an assist for Santi, who's honestly, he could have gotten plenty of goals for himself if he just actually shot. It's an interesting stat once again. Santi, one goal, zero shots. As we move into the final 30 seconds, this is looking very tough for Kenzo. Well, as for at this point, one for five. Unfortunately, still, that crossbar has been a little bit of an enemy for him throughout this game. But the good thing is that he's overcome his enemy and found himself not only a goal, but really been integral to this offense overall. Gotta say, that's one of the biggest things for this UCF Knight team is all three players are extremely capable when it comes to their offense. Whether it's 50-50, setting up a teammate, or just playing a solid overall game, really does seem like the UCF Knights are a triple-sided dagger here, and they are doing such a good job at making sure to emphasize every single player on the pitch. They're trying to kind of desperately get one more goal for the road here, but it's not going to change the outcome nonetheless. UCF Knights go up 2-0 in the series off a 2-0 win, and now it's all eyes on Kennesaw. Can they make this comeback happen? Hyferia... Sweeps have been the trend so far here tonight. I think it's possible we could see a reverse sweep out of Kennesaw, but if history is anything to show us, we might be going for another 3-0. to zero. Yeah, We might just be going for that. UCF, they're just looking so strong, especially if you see, if you look at how the game actually went. We can see a 2-0 scoreline. Scoreline doesn't quite mean a lot in Rocket League. Of course, well, you win. But you can see the flow of the game, and the flow of the game right now was very much UCF in control and just memeing about in the attack, having opportunities, just whiffing them. Just for fun. Haha, -ha, we missed an open net. We'll go another time. That's what UCF are doing right now. They're very much in control and they're looking solid to just take this in three. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you on that one. They look like they could just take this one out right here and 
this would be big. Like we said, they are one of the biggest dogs in this entire tournament. To get a win here not only puts themselves one step further and closer to that $1,000 prize, but it also gives a little bit of a display of what might happen at the land. Both these teams will return for that land in November. And, well, you can guarantee one thing. Kennesaw will be remembering this because, my oh my, what a performance from the Knights so far. It doesn't quite matter. Both these teams are invited to the land. But Kennesaw, you can't be going into that land with confidence. Luckily, we do get to pick their brain about this after this series is over. But they've, they haven't lost yet. We're acting as if they've lost. It's getting tough. Tyro has to clear it away. But they certainly are still in the game. Tyro into the attack. The one who has a score for the side of Kennesaw. Durf to the backboard. Bambi. There's a way to the side. Good read. And Santi, great pass into us for us. For him. Bangs that across the pit, but Dolo, very much equal to it. Equal for now, but can they break out of their own half? Kennesaw at this point already down by one goal very early in the game, number three. So it's about playing from behind now, and we've seen this already today. A lot of the time when a team just starts off on the right foot, it immediately makes it to where someone can try and, you know, just keep that pressure up and keep the team uncomfortable. For the Knights right now, it seems to be a lot of, I would say, Santi who's making the teams uncomfortable, getting in the way of their opponents, just kind of disrupting them overall and making it rather hard for Kennesaw to try and come back here. Oh my word, and they're also being a little bit of a nuisance in offense as well, keeping this one extended. Bambi will go for the follow-up as well and get a 50-50. Look at this. This is what I mean. UCF have made Kennesaw look so uncomfortable in defense here. They are starving them of boost, putting them in awkward positions, and slowly whittling away at their confidence until eventually they find a gap. Luckily enough, though, Kennesaw up to the task and will survive for now. We'll survive for now, but surviving is not enough because if you make one tiny mistake, you will fall through that bridge. Tyro pinches it off the ceiling, gets it into Dolo. Dolo to the backboard. Can he find a second tap? Rocks it. And Santi he goes underneath. Bambi down the other end. Tyro, final man back. Is Santi going to be looking for a bump or just for a redirect? It's Tyro who catches it in the end. Takes it out to the side as far as it gets taken out of the pitch. Not often now he gets taken out, but there it will be one of those. As Bambi is now able to clear it away. Cleared out for now, back out to midfield once again, and this is big for UCF at this point. They have really starved Kennesaw of having any opportunities on offense here, and with a 1-0 lead, that's kind of what you want to do. You just want to even give your opponents the shot to equalize and find that confidence, because that's what it seems right now for Kennesaw. That's what they need. It's just that one spark to completely ignite them and give them a chance back into this game. Could it be here? No, Dolo missing the ball on a wide open net. The best opportunity we have seen all series for Kennesaw. And it has not only gone awry, it's turned into another offense for UCF. Almost able to slot in a second goal, but they will on this one. No, they won't. Santi, so, all right, you know what? Fine, open net miss for open net miss. We're all equalized again, but the score is not. UCF still up by one. UCF, they're still leading, and this is why it can be so dangerous. If you start styling with only one goal up front, it's going to get incredibly difficult. Zafura on the back line, and that is an awkward play, and it will be a conversion for Kennesaw. That is exactly why this is dangerous. One goal, and it's level. This is what we were saying. UCF, we can understand why you guys are trying to play a little bit free form. You don't want to necessarily lose confidence, and the best way to do so is being overly confident in yourselves. But here's where you can get punished. You only had a 1-0 lead, so now it's time to try and find that one goal lead yet again. You know they're going to be firing on all cylinders, so now it's really more of a test for Kennesaw. Can they withstand? And the answer is no. Santi been that nuisance on offense all game, and here is why. A Able to rip off a shot from anywhere, and it, this time it will hit the back of the net. He only wants to score good goals. He doesn't care about those those weak, peasant little goals that just roll into the back of the net. <laughs> he wants boomers. That is exactly what he gets right there, and it is a goal that you skipped didn't need. They are in the lead now as far to the center. Bambi still gets it even further to the center, and that's what I mean. Santi, he could have just been putting that into the back of the net directly. Takes his time, makes the opponent struggle. He likes to see him squirm, and he, in the end, converts. Look at him make everybody jump. Bambi sees that as a perfect opportunity to bump a player out of defense in fantastic form all around out of UCF.
It might just lead them to a 3-0 sweep here in this fourth series of the day. But they have to hold on for another 90 seconds against a team like Kennesaw, which are coming alive on offense. You don't necessarily want to even give them the chance. UCF, it's time to buckle down, lad. Give yourselves the best chance possible here by playing a defensive game and not allowing offense. But so far, they have done exactly that, keeping this midfield presence rather strong and keeping the offense up as well. UCF are wasting valuable time, and for Kennesaw, it's getting down to crunch time. It is now or never to get that first goal and to start this comeback. A pass like that to the center, Tyro. That's dangerous. As Tyro follows it up, Santi, I feel like his positioning on the back run has been about 50% of the time. Pass backwards from Tyro, sends it into Dolo. Dolo into Tyro. Tyro tries to pass it back a bit too much power on it, so Santi is able to catch it, gets it off to the backboard. But Dolo, that's a dangerous touch. It is there for the touch, for the shot, but it's a 50. And as we get into the final 30 seconds, a two goal deficit is what Kennesaw have to fight back from. He's got a chance, but they really do need to not allow another goal out of UCF. If they can find themselves one goal, they've got a chance to really make this comeback happen. And if they do it right here, Dolo up for the early challenge, tries to plenty jump the defensive save, but Santi save just enough out of the way that they cannot get the dunk. And I think in total, that means they will get the game as well. Tyro tries to put one on target to get one more goal in favor. But as the clock ticks down and there are five seconds left, it is all but wrapped up. UCF going for one for the road, and they will find it. Zero seconds for their fourth goal and for their final one of the series. GG's well played. UCF take a 3-0 sweep and solidify themselves as the third team in the semis. UCF looks so strong. The only problem that I do start seeing is that they're styling very quickly. Off the get-go, out of the gate, they're styling, which could lead to problems if you have a wrong read on your opponents, if they be, are a lot stronger than you might expect them to be. It's going to be interesting to see them later on, but this time it's a deserved victory and yet another sweep here. Yeah, another sweep here at this point. It really is starting to seem like teams are pulling out all the stops once it comes down to the quarters here. With only eight, team left, eight teams left, now realistically five teams left, it really does get down to the point where teams aren't pulling out any stops. They are just continuing here to put pressure on pressure on pressure on pressure, stunting at every single opportunity given. And, well, that's why we see what we just saw at a UCF. They came in here with the utmost confidence, came in here with the utmost skill, and executed upon the two of those perfectly. So congratulations to UCF on taking the win here. And, uh, Hyferia, we are now down to one last matchup of the day. This is going to be an interesting one, because like we said, this is going to be one that determines whether or not Clemson makes the land. UCF 2 versus FAU is our final matchup of the night. And... For UCF2, the only other team that has not made the LAN at this point besides Clemson, they win this one, they keep themselves in contention. They lose this one, it automatically goes to Clemson. So, there's a lot on the line. This is going to be a really interesting one, but it's one we're going to have to get to in just a couple of moments. We're going to take a quick break, get everything set up, but when we return, we won't necessarily have the match quite yet. We're going to have a couple of interviews, go talk to the two teams that just played, talk to them and see what they have to say, and, uh, well, we'll see in just a couple of seconds. Quick little break, but we will be back in just a couple moments.
everybody, and welcome back to the CENC Southeast Invitational Virtual, brought to you by and sponsored by the U.S. Army. My name is Bass in the Past, and joined alongside me once again is Hyferia, and again with another special guest. Guest, We want to welcome Durf to the booth. Welcome, my friend, from Kennesaw. You guys, unfortunately, took a little bit of a brutal loss in this last one, but we at least get to hear your thoughts about this one, because, hey, it's not all bad. You guys do have a chance at a rematch in the future here, so, you know, Take the positives where we can, but aside from the land, I still do want to hear about your experience overall here today. You played a lot of really good competition and just kind of interested in your thoughts after being able to, you know, play against some of the teams that you might play at the land. Um, I guess, uh, I guess today was just kind of, it was a little rough, you know, uh, Astra and his team are, they're, they're really good. They're really good. Um, me, Tyro and Dolo really haven't played, um, all that much together. So we're just trying to get, uh, can, uh, just better chemistry and stuff like that so we're just we're just trying to improve as we go and the competition's just it's it's fun so i i enjoy the competing part of this game for sure well, certainly certainly uh how are you looking at the land since you've been swept right now how do you plan to mentally regain and then try and show a better team on the land um honestly just trying to play more together uh just need to get a better just just be more improved our rotations like today i kind of played trashy so i mean it is what it is um i'll just go i'll probably even do like a self replay review honestly just to try and figure some things out for myself um just need to play more as a team we'll regain we have a we have a good mental on the team it's when no one was i'd say necessarily like super down so we'll we'll just we'll figure it out it, uh, it honestly it is what it is we're we're all just glad to be playing we have fun with each other so We'll, we'll just continue to have fun and improve. I like to hear it. I like that. That mentality of it is what it is. We will improve from here on out and we will come back stronger. And we got to hope that you guys do so because like we said, you guys have already qualified for the land. You have a guaranteed yeah. spot there. So when you get there, I'm interested. Are you gunning for a rematch here? Is it basically, all right, USF took us out the first time. That means we got to come back and do it again here. Or is it one of these things where you're kind of uh, looking, you know, to just sort of see whoever the competition is? Is there someone you're gunning for? Or is it just sort of, you know, anyone who gets in our way, they're going down? I mean, obviously, it's whoever gets in our way is going down. Um, I would love for a rematch. Uh, so we're we'll we'll see we'll see. We're we're gonna just grind, get better, and the land will will be fun. We'll we'll survive and conquer. As in, we'll just we'll smash some teams. Hopefully. I love it. I love it. And I was a little bit incorrect on that one. I do apologize. It was UCF that you guys got taken down by, not USF. So no need to throw shade at another team who has yet to, to play you guys quite yet. But there's still a potential that you could face them at land. So we're going to have to see about that one. Durf, we want to thank you very much for coming into the booth, my friend. Any shout outs you want to give before we head on out of here? Uh, No, I mean, shout out to everybody that's watching at KSU. Um, I know I have a buddy watching. Shout out to him. And, uh, um yeah shout out family friends all that that's it thank you guys pleasure pleasure meeting y'all it's a pleasure meeting you as well we wish you nothing but luck in the future my friends so thank you. we're gonna let you go and celebrate with your team that you guys have at least made the land maybe get some you know replays review in here because it wasn't necessarily the result you were looking for but you guys should still be proud anyway so we will let you go and hang out with them have a great rest of your day my friend you too thank you you're welcome Hi, Furia. All right. Well, that is one of the two here. But if you guys thought that we were only going to be speaking to the team that just lost that battle, you are unfortunately a little bit mistaken. We're going to take a second here, get everything set up. But when we get back with another interview, it will be as for this time. And Hyfe, this is going to be an interesting one. As for definitely one of the most crucial parts to that entire win. UCF really did look dominant in their last matchup. And they did look incredibly dominant. What I love about... And Durf coming in here, he just says, look, we, we didn't play too great. We're able to regain and we will try and get better. I think that's a very important aspect. And that's something I'm going to be wondering whether they will have that same mentality on the other side. Oh, well, we're going to be able to ask right now. As for a welcome to the booth, my friend, how are you doing after just taking a dominant 3-0 to victory? I mean, it feels pretty good, you know, feels good to win. 
So. <laughs> I, I would uh, I would hope so. I'd like to hope that the wins are still giving you guys that uh, spark of life necessary, especially at a competitive level like this. We've talked about it a lot here today. We just talked about it with Durf as well, but this LAN is pretty much what everybody has been focused on for this event. You guys obviously have already secured yourselves a spot in the LAN, but considering you're one of the top dogs, I'm kind of interested. Is there any of the competition either left here in this tournament or that is potentially going to the LAN that you guys are kind of interested in or sort of, you know, scouting for right now? Uh, I think our, our the academy team for UCF that's pretty good, and mm -hmm. I think USF is going to this land also. Mm -hmm. They are. So mm -hmm. they, I think they could be good too. It's like the two two teams looking out for the Florida and rivalry. Love it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> always always love some rivalry. <laughs> right, what do you do to to prepare for those kind of matchups? Do you look at their gameplay at all, or do you just go into this with a blank slate and try and adapt on the fly? Uh, not much to be honest. We just kind of just hop into it and we just like play confident you know absolutely yeah i was about to say that's the fairest <laughs> response you could possibly get confidence <laughs> is key in a, an environment like this and I, I do have to ask considering that you've been around the block for quite some time here you've had experience at a semi-pro and professional level of rocket league and now that you're playing in cro with such a or well just in collegiate in general i guess with such an experienced roster what does playing with a player like bambi add to a roster like this what is that sort of experience going to help you and how is that a valuable player to have I mean, it's just like, it's cool because, like, I know I can always rely on him to, like, make the right play and, like, do crazy stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's nice to have a teammate you can rely on. Also, with Santi, like, I can rely on both of them very well. So it's just nice to, nice to have that, you know? Absolutely. I mean, you guys were a, a triple-edged sword on that one. Every single one of you guys was absolutely striking at every single moment throughout that game, and it's the reason you took such a dominant victory to go 3-0. and oh. Congratulations on that. Again, we don't want to take up too much of your time. Let you go and celebrate with your team and also get ready for what will be our final matchup of the night where you guys can sort of watch this one through. So we will let you go and do that. As for a real quick, before we let you go, though, any shout-outs you might want to give? Uh, Shout-out Esports UCF. And yeah, that's it. Clean and simple. Love to hear it from the greatest grid commentator to ever live. As for we're going to let you get on with your day, my friend. Thank you for coming into the booth. Hope you have a good one. Appreciate it. Thank you. You're very welcome. Hi, Feria. All right, my friend. We are now down to one last matchup. It is going to be Florida Atlantic versus UCF Academy. And only one of these teams has punched their ticket to that land already. We are still waiting on that UCF Academy team to figure out if they're going to make it. If they do not, it's going automatically to Clemson here. So we've got a lot on the line. We've got a very interesting matchup, but it's a matchup that's going to take a little while to get there. Quick little break. Get everything set up for what will be our final best of five for the night. So do not go anywhere. We will be back in just a couple of moments.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the CENC Southeast Invitational, brought to you by and sponsored by the U.S. Army. Once again, my name is Bass from the Past, and joining alongside me for the final time tonight is the lovely Hyferian. Hyfe, we are here with our last best of five for the night. It is going to be Florida Atlantic University versus UCF Academy. And this is an interesting one because there's a lot on the line here. Not only does the winner of this one advance into the semifinals to make them top four for this whole event, but it's also the last possible chance for UCF to make this land. They need to win this if they want a chance. Florida Atlantic have already qualified, but if UCF Academy do not win this matchup, their land dreams are over, and it automatically goes to Clemson. So a lot on the line here, Hyfier. This is going to be a very interesting final match. Clemson surely going to be watching and clutching on the two, whatever they've got close to them, because... They have not got this in the bag just yet. If UCF Academy lose here, sure, then yes. But that is going to be a difficult process. They've got an incredibly strong roster. In Florida, Atlantic, they will be swinging. Because, of course, they've still got that prize money up top. They want to take that home. On either side, they've got something massive to battle for. And honestly, going into this, I have no clue who will come out on top. I have no idea either. All I'm hoping for at this point is a really good back and forth. And, well, I have faith we can get that out of these two teams. Two very capable squads. Let's see now if they can really show it when the time comes. Best of five underway here. Florida Atlantic in the blue. UCF Academy in the orange. Let's get this one started. Game number one underway. Bits out to the side. Lyrics and defense. Makes it weird. Trying how many crackers. Bits to the center. Blum misses the ball. Hammy staying right behind him. Tries to pop that one forward. Does indeed do so, but Bits just waiting on the defensive end. And right now, if you only look at the tags going on, I say UCF is favorite. I would say so. It's all uh, tournament winner GC tags for Florida Atlantic, while UC or UCF have a CRL tag, a Season 3 SSL tournament winner, and then another Season 3 SSL tournament winner. Only this time it's pink, meaning they did it at least three times. So UCF came through with the tags, but are the tags going to be enough at this point? They still need to perform, and so far here in game number one, it's been a tentative back and forth, but Bits will rip off a shot. Not quite on target, but I like that already. UCF UCF starting their offense. And Bits restarting it and giving it some new life, kicking it. But won't be breaking through lyrics. Out to the side, Bits lets this one out for Reeves. Pops it to the back for a bit, just waiting patiently. Hammy leaving that ball for Frisbee, who's apparently in a, a deep slump. I haven't noticed that thus far. Bits off the ceiling, takes it across the pitch, goes deep. Lyrics is the one who has to take care of it. Third man, it's a big commit, but Bits is back in time. Back in time for now, but with 90 seconds gone here, it really has been one of the things where we've seen a lot of last minute touches from different teams. It's kind of trying to hopefully find that savior touch and keep it out of their half. I don't really like this last second, uh, I don't know, defense, I guess is the best way to put it here, but this sort of just hold on and wait until it's time until the time comes has got me nervous. In these type of scenarios, all it takes is one mistake, and that'll open up the net. And well, luckily enough for Frisbee, they are not the one to make that first crucial mistake. Can they make another save? Yes, they can. Good job cutting off Reeves. Doesn't get credited with this time, but it's enough to break out of the half and give Florida Atlantic their first offense in quite some time. I've gotten some offense for Florida Atlantic, but have they really been threatening? Not thus far. You said are doing a nice job of shutting it down at its roots. And clear away from Lyrics, won't break through Hammy. Good rotation. That pop is not the one for him. It's Lyrics rips a shot. Biss was wanting to take his time. A bit of a miscommunication on the side of UCF Academy. I'm going to have to go back on defense. Lyrics gets it to the side. Follow-up coming through as well. Sends one player flying. Gets it to the backboard. Then the backboard hit. Just a bit too slow. A bit too slow here. In this first game, really starting to break down that pace of play to just keep everything slow. It's methodical as ever. And unfortunately, because of that, neither team can really be all too confident in their own play here. All it takes is one little mistake, and that'll separate the two of these sides. And Florida Atlantic is about not making that mistake on defense right now, enduring a whole lot of pressure. But finally, a little bit of a break, but only for a moment. Bits out of midfield will keep this offense alive and will take a shot that drills into the back of the net as well. UCF up on top. Good 
pass up for bits to himself. And within uh, three minutes of playtime, it is UCF who strike first. Finally, are able to generate a crack big enough they can move through as Florida Atlantic. They need to fight back to uh, get into this series once again. Bits to the center. Hammy is awkward. Has a bit more time than he expects it to. And doesn't matter. The clear way to the side will be good enough. And the jump in from Hammy very much sends it flying towards the other end. Bits needs to stay close to this play. It leaves space for Hammy. And then a double commit ends up happening. They do still clear it away. Then. Clear it away. But here's a whole lot of pressure now for Florida Atlantic. They are just looking for that golden shot. And could it be this one? Yes, it Ooh. will. Blum going to slot one in. And with 80 seconds left, Florida Atlantic will equalize. Three players committed, but even that was too little. It might have been actually a clear out if that ball didn't get redirected. That will be a matter of myth buster or a what if question. We'll never <laughs> really find out. And lyrics and to the side. We might just find out whether he can generate a goal or a layup. It's Frisbee going down the other end. He's just 52 players out of the play completely. Bits with a massive boomer. The Hammy staying far back far back but maybe not necessarily the wisest decision because now it's given some time and space <gasps> to UCF and what happened here Blum in the net and just doesn't backflip in time thought they had more time than they really did but oh no that is just such an easy giveaway UCF back on top this really is one of those worlds where it's backwards. No, 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 wait, forward, backwards, forward, backwards, forward. Oh, it's in the back of the net. Okay. Uh, that was terrible. It was. But you have to move on. You have to try and get it back. It's unfortunate. Maybe he thought the ball would be going differently, that it would go right on top of his car. It doesn't matter. He should forget about it. And so will we. And Reese, he brings us on to a new topic here. The 3-1 to one achieved. You want to know something who has not, or know someone who has not forgotten that play? Reeves. It has given them the confidence necessary to start free jumping shots like that. And there's the big difference right now is you do not want to give UCF Academy extra momentum in their favor. They come into this one slightly the underdog just because of the fact that they are not already seated at this land. The unfortunate truth is, is that as soon as you give them momentum, they no longer become those underdogs. They actually give themselves a whole lot of favor here. Uh-oh, but they first have to survive on defense, and they will indeed. Overexposure on offense, and well, you can understand why. With 30 seconds left, Florida Atlantic, we're hoping to throw everything at offense, but when it doesn't turn out successful, UCF will strike. This is a smart play by Florida Atlantic, even though they concede. So it might seem silly, but they have to. They have to try and jump in, get a goal on the board. 30 seconds, two goal differential. Play like that, very warranted. And UCF, they know that as well. Convert and quickly go down the other end. That will be game number one locked up for UCF. Maybe there's another one into the back of the net for Florida Atlantic, but it's seemingly not the case. Hammy might actually even concede another one. Reed with this clever pass into the midfield won't be reaching his teammate and as this timer wraps on up and this ball will end up hitting the ground Reeves pre-flipping or pre-jumping rather that will be game number one for UCF UCF taking a huge win here in game number one not only because of the fact that they obviously get the win but they do so with such a momentum shift Felt rather even for most of this game, but you get down to the last minute or two, and all of a sudden, UCF just start popping off. Overwhelming amount of shots, overwhelming amount of offensive pressure as a whole. And the stats alone, they really took this game. Four saves versus their opponents, one. And in addition to that, eight shots versus their opponents, six. Both in offense and defense, out score, or out, uh... Statisticing? What's the word here? I don't know. Outclassing, I guess, their opponents is the easiest way to say it. But it didn't necessarily feel like it was an outclassing of a show here. Florida Atlantic are very much still in this game. A couple of minor adjustments here and there, and they can absolutely take the win. Absolutely. I think this is one of the closest matches that we have seen this evening. And it's, it's weird to say that with a 4-1, to one, which realistically should be a 3-1 to one to end if UCF or if Florida Atlantic was playing full defense and not playing for the comeback, which would be the silly thing to do, that will be a 4-1. But going into game number two, Florida Atlantic, I do, do think this is, is a pivotal game. Otherwise, UCF will be on match point. We might be able to get one back, but apart from that, it might just be too far out of reach. So a pivotal game coming up here for Florida Atlantic and Reeves. He's already clearing two of players off of the 
play by his lonesome, and then a bump in the neck. Great start for Florida Atlantic. That is fantastic all around. The adjustments to recognize that there needs to be a bump here, and Hamby basically gets free time and space. Bits not even looking at the player rushing them. Fantastic all around from Florida Atlantic, and a hell of a way to just shake off the rust from game number one. I like this. I like that we're seeing a really good back and forth here, because Hyferi, it makes me think that maybe finally we can find ourselves at game number five. No guarantees here, but, man, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. I'd love to see a good back and forth series. How lovely would that be? Lyrics, he pops that up in front of his own goal, gets it further away. Ami, out to the side, good demo for first B. And the demos are certainly a strat that works. It closes, or it opens up gaps in the back end. They have to deal with it. Reed with a phenomenal tap up. Bits actually prepared for it. Has to take a step back before the, he is fully prepared, though, with Hami. There's a way. Bits in a position to try and for it, go for a solo play. 50 with Blum sends it wide. Reeves passing field of the passes. They're going to be lethal for UCF this time. They need to be wary on a defense. They need to be rather, oh my word, cautious on defense here as UCF unfortunately overexposed themselves. No such luck on the punishment out of Florida Atlantic, but this is not the time to start getting nervous. The reason we saw UCF do so well in game one is because of that calm composure that they just kept throughout the whole match. This time, the panic on defense and these scrambles to just try and keep up with the pace of play has left them exposed. Luckily enough, they don't get punished from it, but if they get punished here, no such luck. Lyrics with a fantastic save, but it's been a lot of offensive pressure right now for Florida Atlantic for a very long amount of time. Finally, we see a breakaway from UCF, but can it result in a goal? No such luck. Reeves' shot is denied, and uh-oh, Frisbee, time and space, and a oh, flick into oh. the back of the net. One-two punch in Florida Atlantic on top by two. Look, Bits was already wrong-footed. Even if Bits spawned on the right side here, Frisbee still would have boomed that through. A phenomenal flick, greatly controlled. With uh, three minutes left to go, UCF take a two-goal deficit. Florida Atlantic playing up to par here and really bringing the game to their opponent. Varivi, he's got some tricks in the bag as well. Great save on a Frisbee once again. They need to keep strong on the defensive end. Frisbee with uh, the deep slump added to their name. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. After this game, I'm not so sure what your slumps look like. If this is you in a slump, what on earth do you look like when you're playing at peak? My friend, you are absolutely doing fantastic right now. A goal, two saves, and three shots. Really integral on both sides of the pitch. And this is kind of what we're seeing out of Florida Atlantic. Game number one, a little bit of that slump state. But as we've gone on, they've all started to step up and really step up when it matters most. Halfway through this game, and this is by far a much better game all around from the entirety of Florida Atlantic. And, well, here's why. They're just taking advantage of every little mistake. UCF playing well, but not perfect. And that is enough for Florida Atlantic to take a 3-0 lead. It's like that. Frisbee just finds himself an open net in Florida Atlantic. I said it was a pivotal game, and they realize it themselves. This is looking solid for them. They're playing on a different level and kind of waiting for the mistakes that UCF make capitalizing upon them directly while also like this staying incredibly solid in the defensive end one sending one player at it pushing the play and then having a slayer there to back up frisbee not getting the second tap but it's <gasps> hammy crackers who booms it up or reeves going on the counter attack frisbee with the quick challenge will delay some time and hopefully enough for them but this he, he's a sore and into the back of the net he goes you got to hope that isn't the catalyst of everything else that happens here in this game. Sometimes that's how it goes. You make one mistake on offense and all of a sudden, a lot of that momentum you had you had been building just kind of goes out the window. It's now up to Florida Atlantic to try and recover there, shake off a little bit of the mistake and get right back onto your confidence as, oh my word, it's going to be a little bit difficult though because here comes UCF. They're going to build their own offense. They're going to make some passing plays oh. and they're going to score off of it. One, two, three. Beautiful from UCF. What a play. The passing field, the pass back to Bits. Bits with the fake out as well. Realizing that if he took that shot directly, there would be a defender. And that is just a smart play for UCF. Well combining great team play. Reeves to the backboard. The goal differential has been reduced to one. And they certainly want to pull it level completely. Bits to the center. Nobody come in. And then Lyrics will be way too quick. All of a sudden, UCF, they up the thrusters and pull the tide. 
I said this for a reason. A lot of those plays where the offense just kind of goes awry can be the catalyst to the other team finding some confidence, and it quite literally was here. No caster curses for the day. A couple of caster blessings, and unfortunately, that caster blessing has only been one-sided here. Florida Atlantic would love a little bit of that luck rubbing off on them, but no such luck at that. They're going to have to now try and get their lead back with only about 80 seconds left here, and honestly, before they even try for their lead, they're going to have to try and get out of their half. UCF back to their overwhelming offensive pressure, and this does not bode well for the team in blue, which desperately need a win here in game number two. Reeves has a free ball, or almost has one. And UCF, they're very heavily reliant on those passing plays. Lyrics might just be able to force a solo play. No, it's bits to the back for a Frisbee prepared for it. And that's exactly why UCF are heavily going for those passing plays. Purely because Florida Atlantic, the solo plays, they've got it locked down. Let's see whether they've got the solo plays locked down as well on the other end. They do, <gasps> but the team play, the second player coming all in. I guess that's where, that's where the deep slump comes from. I'm starting to get really nervous of Florida Atlantic oh, no. at this point. Oh boy, for a number of reasons. Their accuracy on offense is letting them down and their ability to defend is letting them down as well. Open net, easy shot as Frisbee misses this one. And this is not good. The panic is setting in for Florida Atlantic. Hyferia, they need to settle down and settle down fast. This one hurts. Frisbee, first up missing the shot. Very forgivable. It, it was a tough shot. But then missing the save, it just kind of piles upon the, the mistake early or the inaccuracy, I should say. I don't want to call it a mistake. And then all of a sudden, your team has to come back from one goal deficit after being up by three in these final 15 seconds. And UCF, they're not going to allow you any space. They're not going to allow you any avenue to get back. They're into the attack and second one. In for the lead it would be fatal and would be uh, the uh, detrimental part of the game. I have to keep it up. Hammy is turning in. Lyrics actually keeps it up to the sky. Hammy, it's a backboard. Reeves is up for it. Reeves doesn't convert, but doesn't need to. And there we go. The Knights one game away from the upset victory against one of the teams that has already qualified here for this LAN. I... I don't know what to say right now, Hyferia, aside from the fact that Florida Atlantic just completely threw away that lead. It also seems like UCF are a team to never say die. They had one, one single play that went in favor of them, and then from there on out, they did not miss a beat. Florida Atlantic giving up that one opportunity on goal. I mean, we knew it could be the catalyst. I did not think it would be that much of a catalyst, though. What a turnaround from UCF. All of a sudden, they started being explosive. They directly got on to the other end and managed to convert it three times. Bang, bang, bang. Every single time. They were incredibly quick with it, and that just demoralizes. That gives a little bit of a concussion almost to Florida Atlantic, where they have to take a bit of time to recover. They don't get the time, though. UCF, they want to get to that line, and they want it badly. They need one more to try and pull up the sweep. We're expecting more of the series, but currently UCF might just sweep. There's absolutely a chance, but the big thing here is, is that there's no guarantee, even if Florida Atlantic get a couple of goals, that they will continue the series here. We saw it once. We could see it again. UCF with that comeback potential that is just otherworldly. They might not even need a comeback if they can start out the gates. Firing! No such luck as Reeves is interrupted. But already, UCF starting off high. Bits out to the side. Hammy up high. Gets it into the edge of the box with Lyrics. He's there on the top ropes. Gets the second touch. Blum. The backward low boost. Pass it along the center. Bits doesn't rip an immediate shot. Just wants to play the boost game and put that awkward pressure on. Bits flying in front of Frisbee. Those Hammy crackers. With the clear away, Lyrics, Boomer to the back for Frisbee. Still enough boost to try and clear this one out. Blum has to be careful for his life, and the opponent was chasing them down. Hammy, big Boomer down the other end. Bits, easy catch. Oh, you might say it is easy. It's actually right onto the opponent. This one also right onto the opponent, but it's still Reeves to come away with the play. Come away with the play for right now, but can it lead to anything greater? Not so much, because here come Florida Atlantic back on offense, and they've spent a lot of time on offense throughout this game. They do have a total of two shots, but unfortunately, they need a little bit more than that. They need shots like that going on target, but they also need to have a defender who can't save like Frisbee. Frisbee doing a fantastic job of keeping his team in this game, and also getting a couple of nice flicks here. This one not going to be enough, but what about the follow-up? Blum will find the back of the net and Florida Atlantic will put themselves on top. 
and there is the push out to the side a bit too weak landing at the edge of the box and then Blum is there to take care of a business he still wants this badly and takes Florida Atlantic for a little stroll back towards a comeback scenario lyrics into the corner gets uh, the 100 boost but Hammy in the backboard surely able to shut that down 50 engaged Reeves massive victor out of that one fakes it out pass it along the center bits with another 50 frisbee staying close has a lyrics to come up against next also takes care of business there takes care of business for now but for how long this has been such a tense back and forth it feels like as much as this consistency has been fantastic we've seen it before florida atlantic can give up a lead rather quickly so i stay nervous for the team their defense has definitely been better this game i will 100 percent give it to them with two savior medals one for frisbee and the other for hammy they're definitely stepping up and really staying a lot more solid on defense overall but again, in a scenario like this where it is 1-0, to all it takes is one single mistake and we are all evened up yet again. Oh, well, speaking oh, of which. This is... I feel like a mistake is, is, you know, something forgivable, something that can happen. This is just a blunder. Frisbee putting it into, into the back of his own net. And he is just not feeling too great about that one, I can't assume. It's the time to regain, though. That is the biggest part of Reeves. He's been so incredibly quick. After they've gotten one tiny crack, they will immediately move through to the next one and try and capitalize more and more. This time, they won't be able to do that as quickly. The one big thing we're seeing as a difference right now, though, is that Florida Atlantic do not seem to be too frazzled by that last mistake. Oh, well. okay, well... Come on, guys, don't let me... I almost got through this entire day without a caster curse. You're going to really set it off with what could be the final match of the day because now UCF are not only up 2-1, to one, but they are up 2-0 to zero in the series. They hold on to this lead, Hyperia. That's the end of our night. That's the end of our night. It would be an unfortunate end because there's so much more in this series or there could be so much more than just the sweep reefs of the ceiling. Gets the flip off and lyrics also gets the flip off but that is an open net for frisbee can he convert i think that's on target and indeed it is frisbee redeems itself rights his wrongs and pulls it tied that is big for frisbee a team and a player that really has been getting into these slumps as soon as the momentum goes away from them there's a hell of a way to put the momentum back in your favor get yourself back into this one mentally this florida atlantic you've got two minutes left here to take the lead and take this game and keep the series alive you do not want to let ucf continue with their dominance here because so far you guys have looked like a team that could absolutely take them down but just haven't quite been able to live up to the expectations expectations all they need is one good game and they may be able to right all of the wrongs of this series so far but we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves with 100 seconds left there's also a chance that UCF could just finish out the series right here right now maybe even with a shot right here Reeves off target but will set up his teammate Lyrics shot on target and that will find the back of the net and UCF regain the lead with 90 seconds remaining Bits basically made sure that Lyrics had free pickings of where he wanted to place that shot Except for the place where Hammy Cracker was at. Chooses the bottom right corner. Nicely converts to UCF. They take the lead. 90 seconds remain. Plenty of time for Florida Atlantic to get something on the board again. And they can't be creeping up this close. Bits just breaks through. And Bits will rip off a short Florida Atlantic. They seem crumbling. Unfortunately so. It's not the greatest touch. And then you see the double commit out at midfield. They're starting to pull their defense just so they can get some extra aggression in. And I can understand if they were down by a couple of goals and there was like 30 seconds left. Doing it while down by one with over a minute remaining is a bold move. And unfortunately, it's a bold move which has not paid off. Maybe they can find something here. Hammy wants to use their flip reset but didn't quite catch it. So instead now it's Bits taking it the other way. And UCF now wasting valuable time. Florida Atlanta cannot afford to get locked into their half for too long. They need to get some offense and they need it quick. They need it incredibly quick. One minute is the time frame that they have been given to get two goals. That's about 30 seconds a goal of course. And Rocket League, it can be a weird one where a kickoff goal might just happen, but it also can go down the other end. Frisbee cre creeping up too close, and UCF, they might have just locked up a, a next game of sport.
They basically need kickoff goals if this one's going to change at all. Florida Atlantic with 40 seconds left to get three in a row. And here's the scarier part about this whole thing. It's been three in a row for UCF at this point. We got to two to two, and then three uncontested from UCF have put them on top here. They look incredibly strong, and unfortunately, they don't seem to be slowing down. Shots on target. And I think that alone has secured them the game. Not enough time for a comeback out of Florida Atlantic. Even if they score right here, right now, it would take them quite some time to find another couple goals. And they didn't do that. So unfortunately for Florida Atlantic, despite multiple solid games, they're going to fall in a 3-0 sweep and a 6-2 deficit to UCF Academy, who have brought themselves one step further to securing a spot at land. The scoreline in the game and the series it feels so unfair towards Florida Atlantic. Mm -hmm. They've already secured the uh, spot on the land, of course. But still, you want to keep it closer. It would be just a confident boost. And a 3-0 victory for UCF will certainly sway the uh, momentum down at the other end as they might actually make it 7-2. Off the crossbar at rings, Fitz is there to finish it off. And they're unrelenting as well. They want a statement here, man. They understand that Florida Atlantic might have come into this one a little bit of the heavy favorites, but very quickly they turn it on its head and show exactly how threatening of a team they may be. They may be the academy team, but they are no slouches, and by far they showed that here today. 3-0 to victory over a team that has already secured themselves a spot at land, meaning... It's now down to two of them. Clemson and Florida, and excuse me, and UCF Academy are the two teams left here in the Invitational who have not already secured themselves a spot at the LAN. So this win is massive for the UCF team. Congratulations on taking the victory and securing yourselves a spot in that top four. A yeah, must win to keep themselves within the running, and that is only to keep themselves within the running. Clemson and UCF Academy. I don't know whether they'll be up against each other or what's going to be happening in that regard, but it will certainly be an incredibly intense one. It will be a very, very intense back and forth. And, well, all the battles we've had here today so far have been extremely intense. It has been an incredible back and forth, my friend. We've gone through five best of fives here, and every single one of them has absolutely delivered. But, unfortunately, we're now concluding with our final best of five. But... We are not done overall here. We're going to get some stuff set up here. A quick little break, but when we return, we are going to have our last interviews of the day. You guys are absolutely going to want to see them because we've got a lot of excited folks, including the underdogs here, waiting in the wings to get into the booth. So stick around. We're going to be a couple of seconds, get all of this set up. But when we return, our final interviews for the night.
everybody, and welcome back to the CENC Southeast Invitational. Once again, my name is Bass from the Past, joined alongside on, I believe, this side of me is going to be the lovely Hyferia. And Hyfe, it is our final interviews of the night. I'm sad that we are here, but I'm happy to introduce our first interviewee. Welcome, Frisbee, to the booth, my friend. A little bit of an unfortunate loss here for you guys today, but hey, gotta hope that the spirits are still high. You guys have a lot of potential in the future. You still did play fantastic. How are you doing on this fine evening? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, feel you on that one, my friend. You get past the age of 20 in Rocket League and everyone calls you a boomer, so you are in uh, good hands with the rest of us, my friend, here. But, unfortunately, not necessarily the best of hands tonight. You guys still played a fantastic series, but unfortunately, you did end up losing to UCF and their academy team, who now have the chance to face you guys at LAN. You've already punched in your ticket. You're guaranteed to be able to go to this LAN in November no matter what. But are you guys kind of hoping that you see UCF make it there so you can get a rematch? Are you hoping that, you know, they end up falling in the semis? What are your feelings uh, towards this team now that have just taken you down? We got a, oh, 100% sure that you, they are going to qualify. That's a bold, mo all right, I like it. I like the confidence there. I mean, listen, I'd love to see you guys there face against them again. We got to hope so that we can see you guys play them again. But, uh, you know, all for the future, all speculation. Hi, Fury, I'm going to give you a chance, my friend, to also ask Frisbee a question. Of course. Well, yeah, it, 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 we, I just want to point out the name. Of course, a deep slump in behind your name. It, coming into this, is that something you, you try and do to relieve the nerves a bit? Or what's the story behind it? You guys still did play fantastic. I think you do need to give yourself enough credit to say that you guys really did give them a, not only a good run for their money, but kept every game competitive. It's one of these things where every once in a while you see a sweep that doesn't necessarily feel like a sweep, and I can confidently say today that did not feel like a sweep. You guys put up a really good run for the money, and I think that you guys deserve to be in the spot that you are. We're hoping we see you back at the land, get another conversation in with you, but for now, we will let you get on with your night. Frisbee, real quick before you go, though, any shout-outs you might want to give to anybody watching? Awesome, awesome. Love to hear it. Love to hear the support that you got behind you. And really, I think you deserve it, my friend. Outstanding performance here today. An unfortunate result, but I know that you guys will be back in the future, hungrier than ever, and performing just as fantastic. Thank you so much, Frisbee, for hopping into the booth with you. Hope you have a great rest of your night, my friend. Much appreciated. All right, Hyferia, that was our conversation with Frisbee, but we are not quite done here when it comes to interviews with some of these lovely lads who played here today. We're going to pop in Reeves in just a second, have him hop on in here and talk to us from the side of the UCF Academy team, who I got to imagine they're pretty ecstatic here. Again, on paper, these guys were not supposed to be making it into this uh, semifinals, so... They've got to be pretty happy that they've made it this far. They've got to be pretty ecstatic that they even get the shot at this one, at the shot at a land on top of that. And, well, I think he might have entered. Reeves, welcome to the booth, my friend. Congratulations on the win. As we were just mentioning, you guys have got to be pretty happy right now. You just took a win that, not necessarily unexpected, but on paper as one of the only two teams to not have already been invited to the land. This is a massive step. Hey, yeah, it is. Uh, we were kind of 
like confused at first when we weren't invited, but like the opportunity to play this and get in was a nice relief to see because we feel like we are one of the better teams of the teams in this bracket. I would agree. <laughs> you guys displayed that in that last one. Fantastic series all around. 3-0 to zero over uh, Florida Atlantic University, who did not play poorly, but at the same time, you guys just seem to have that edge every single time. Congratulations on the win, and I'll leave the questions over to Hyferia now. Hyfe, any questions for our winner? Well, look, at it. obviously, it's UCF Academy. Do you scrim often with the so-called main team? No, we've never played them. Oh, and, well, does that then kind of help you in being somewhat of an underdog with the academy still behind your name obviously phenomenal players but the academy is is still there i mean yeah they're on paper the better team and we'll have to see if we ever play them but it should be a good match if we get the chance to I mean, you say if we get the chance to, you guys are pretty close to that chance here. All you need is one more win over this USF squad, and there's a potential that you may face this UCF team in the grand finals of this event. How special would that be if not only do you guys get a chance to face UCF, your main squad in the grand finals here, but if you make it that far, and that means that both the UCF squads end up in the end, you do so by punching yourself a ticket to land. Just getting past this Clemson roster already means that you guys get a chance, or well, not a chance, a guarantee at that land. So how special would it be if you and the other UCF teams, both of you, get to show up to this land in November? Yeah, it would be really cool because I've never competed on a land. I know some of the guys on the UCF A team have, but I don't think anybody, I think Bits has, but Lyrics and I haven't. So it'd be really fun to see all the guys in person and finally get a chance to. That would be awesome. We'd love to see it. We'd love to see that little bit of rivalry in between the school here. And, you know, maybe you guys get an upset win and all of a sudden out of nowhere, who's really the Academy team? We're going to have to find <laughs> out here. Thank you so much for hopping into the booth with us, Reeves. Really do appreciate your time here. Any shout outs you want to give before we let you go and celebrate? Uh, shout out to Bits and Lyrics. They're doing their thing, helping me, carrying me. Nice. <laughs> I don't know about carrying, my friend. You had a pretty impressive performance tonight, but I'll let you say what you want to say, my friend. Thank you so much for hopping through here tonight. Congratulations one more time on the win. Really impressive performance. Hope you have a great rest of your night. Thanks. You too. Much appreciated. I fear you. We are here with the end of our night. We have gone through five best of fives here, the entirety of the quarterfinals, but now it is down to only two of us, just you and me in the booth. Hi, where can we see more of you from here on out, my friend? Where else can we find you and your lovely face? Uh, in, in my bed very soon. Uh, but apart <laughs> from that, basically look up the name Hyferia on, on whatever social media platform you want to find me on, and I'll be there. If I'm not, I don't have that social media platform. and just... I'm I'm everywhere. I feel like I'm I'm <laughs> running between places, and I hope to be back here very soon as well. Oh my word! Similar to hype, that's probably where you'll find me. Anybody, <laughs> anywhere you can find Bass from the past. And well, if you guys want to find more action for the CENC, stay tuned. We've got a lot of good, uh, well, esports in general popping up here on the channel. So make sure to tune in every single day of this week for even more collegiate action. We've got so much still on our hands, including more Rocket League in a couple of days. I think the next time that we are going to see Rocket League in particular is going to be Thursday for those semifinals. So make sure to keep your eyes peeled for on this channel for the entirety of the week. There's a whole lot of potential still here and a whole lot of good collegiate esports to be played. But for now, that is all that we have got. Thank you so much, everybody that came through here today for helping us out watching this one and giving your support. And I also want to give a shout out to the U.S. Army as well for sponsoring this entire event. Really does mean a lot for you guys to give some money and put some support into this collegiate space because it is such a blossoming scene and such an awesome thing to see. So shout out to the both, both you guys in the audience as well as the U.S. Army, as well as also shout out behind the scenes. Shout out to Colton for helping, out, uh, helping us out with everything here today. Excuse me, as well as KTAD behind the scenes who helped organize all of this, and really everybody behind the scenes in production. Shout out to all of you guys for making this happen. But now the shout outs have concluded, let's conclude the day as well. Thank you guys for coming through here. We will see you next time for even more Collegiate Esports action. But for myself, for Hyfury, and everybody else, thank you and have a great rest of your night.